This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. It don't make it so loud. Oh, it's so noisy. I can't stand it. Anyway, hi, everybody. I'm Alex Bennett, and this is The Ramble. We go on until midnight tonight on the eastern part of the United States, eastern daylight time. Uh, just for your local time zone, your different time zones may vary. Okay? All right. Hey, we got a great guest tonight, and we interviewed him earlier today. And it goes on for quite a while because not only is he a comedian... But he's into a lot of politics. Ladies and gentlemen, watch this. Ladies and gentlemen, look who we have here. Mm. Gosh, I haven't seen you in a long time. I've been a while, buddy. Yeah, it's been a, a while. while. Ladies and gentlemen, please. What? What? You got, you, you got videos behind you? I got books behind me. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. So you're a reader and I'm a watcher. All right. Yeah, okay. So how have you been, Rob Schneider? Praise, man. But yeah. in a good way, you know? Yeah. It's like um, quality problems. Quali- quality problems. They're all problems, but you just want good ones. You know, you yeah. don't want to have to sell your refrigerator to, just to, you want like, you know, to buy crack. That, that's like a bad problem. Yeah. The good problem is you got a TV show, you got to promote it and yeah, uh, and uh, and pay for it, you know, for what, <laughs> whatever extra stuff that Netflix doesn't pay for, I got to pay for so, so Netflix, okay. Netflix gives you a certain amount of money and the rest of it you have to come up with? Yeah. Well, they don't give you the money all up front. They pay you over time. So you got to go to, like, the bank and then borrow some money. And then I just said, you know what? I'll just front it myself, and then they'll pay me. When they pay me, it'll be fun. You know? <laughs> so I'm an idiot also. I should yeah. tell you that. Yeah. I should tell your listeners that, too. Well, now, this, this thing you've got is called Real Rob. Yes, sir. And it's on Netflix. Let's get the whole plug out of the way early here in the conversation. All right. And um, it it almost looks in many ways like it's a homemade production. In other words, is that your house? Yes. That Most is. M- what? Some of it was shot in studio, but some of it's my house. Yeah. Yeah. Some of it's your house. All right. Uh, is that uh, your child? Yeah, cheaper. Yeah, yeah, use your own yeah, kid. Yeah, and is that your wife? That's my wife. Cheaper. Use your own it, wife. Yeah. So, and you directed. Oh, it. You directed. Huh? Very much. You know, my, my dream was to try to make something like Faulty Towers my entire <laughs> life, and so I married a woman. Luckily, um, a brilliant uh, comedian. Uh, who she's from Mexico. She never acted before, but I just knew she'd be great. And so, you know, I met with John Cleese. He was nice enough to talk to me and get so give me some advice for the series. Yeah, and he said, "Did you write it all? Did you write it all beforehand before you shot it?" And I went, "Yes, good. Then you can get somewhere interesting." And so, uh, you know, Cleese kind of gave me. I said, "Can you give me your blessings?" And he kind of did this to me. So it was nice. <laughs> he, He's I, my hero. I had him on the show once years ago at Live 105 in San Francisco. The wow. nicest guy I've oh, yeah. ever dealt with. Oh, incredible! No, no, he was just like he was so nice to me and generous and telling me stories and like. And then when I got up to leave, well, he got up to leave, and he's like six five, you know. Yeah. And uh, he said, "Well, you know, uh, are you writing the new series?" And I said, we're, "Yeah, we're starting out doing outlines." He said, "Okay, good." See, the difference is when we wrote the first season or the second season. The first season we wrote, we were married. The second season we wrote, we were divorced. No, I don't know. <laughs> I can't afford that. He said, "Neither could I." Uh, yes, exactly, exactly. But uh, you're still married, so everything's fine. Yeah, it hasn't come out yet. Alex. <laughs> when does when does a new one come out? Midnight. Tonight? Tonight at midnight. Worldwide. 190 countries. Can you imagine this? Wow. Now, the first one must have done okay. Otherwise, Netflix wouldn't have picked up a second series. I know. What's the point? Yeah, if they don't, yeah. So they were happy enough with it. Enough. You know, I say enough is the word I like to use. But here's my lovely wife. Patricia, say hi to my buddy yeah. for 35 she, she years. Is the oh. other, she is the other star of the program. Hello, Patricia. How are you? My, bu- I'm good. my buddy Alex you? Bennett from San Francisco back in the day. He's in New York right now. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. And uh, 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 we, we, I, 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 was, uh, I was a judge at your comedy competition. Do you remember? Yes. 80 what? 80, 87. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> Something and like that. He supported that. me back then when he didn't have to. Oh, yeah. that's nice. And I, I didn't want to be a judge because I was afraid everybody would say, oh, you're going to fix it and so on. So I didn't want to do it, and I always refused <laughs> to do it. And finally, I, one day I said, I okay. Did you do it? Because you were the biggest comedy supporter in the Bay Area. Yeah. Well, so we, to not have Alex Bennett would be, you know, you missing something. Well, so I said I was going to, oh, it's cute. Uh, 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 I, I said that uh, uh, I didn't want to do it because people would accuse me of stuff, of knowing you guys and being friends with you people and so on. You and were 100% so, right, and you should have yeah. stayed out of yeah. it because... You had there was a no win win situation. Oh, no. So, so what basically, happened? your listeners who don't know, yeah, what the guy who got the win of, of the comedy competition, who had a great show that night, every you know people were unhappy and they were going to blame somebody because there could only be one winner that night. And I purposely did not want to win because I believed that if you won that, you were cursed. Yes, right. <laughs> and I was right. I was You're right. Right. Robin Williams lost it. So did Dana Carvey. There's no way I wanted to win that. <laughs> But anyway, so what happened was I brought my friend Richard Sheckman, Shecky, from The Letterman Show and had him on one side of me and I had my girlfriend on the other. And I said, look, I'm going to vote here. And if you think that I'm voting because I know these guys and I'm prejudiced to these guys and they weren't as good as to get my let just let me know. In other words, keep me honest. OK. Yeah. And so you come on and I vote on how good your set is. And Warren comes on and I do how good his set is, and the, I guess who was the who was the favored comic in that uh, in that bunch? It was a magi- was it a impersonator, a magician, or something? Somebody. I think Rick Reynolds was the one that Rick, was uh, Rick Reynolds. I think he was the one who um, I don't know. I yeah. mean, I, I would have to well, say the, if you wrote down his set, he was the best of all of us. You know, it was he, Rob Becker, me, uh, Rick Reynolds, and then um, I forget the other Warren two. Thomas. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. And Warren. I, was Stephen and Warren, per- Stephen Warren was, and, and Warren was the best performer. Yeah, well, 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 Warren won the comedy competition, but here's yeah. why. It's two nights, and uh, you, uh, it, it's an, a rolling average of the two nights, okay, between yeah. the judges and the audience voting and so on, all right? So mm-hmm. it was two nights, and what happened was uh, one night, uh, both nights, Warren came in second. And Reynolds right. came in first, but he came in first the first night, third the second night. Oh, yeah, that's right. Okay, that makes sense. and so yeah. it averaged out to Warren winning. And so now everybody's going, Bennett fixed the comedy competition. You know what? You know what? If you would have explained that clearer that night, that would have prevented 40 years of angst. <laughs> <laughs> but that makes perfect sense. Yeah. And I'll, I'll tell you the truth. I think Warren is a better performer, and more likable, and more memorable. Yeah. I mean, I, Rick Reynolds has a, had a better act. I really do. I do it, think so. I think he maybe had a better act, but, well, but I, I. A lot of times with comedians, it's what happened that, in that moment. Y- and you got to go with. And, well, and Warren's, Warren, it was Warren's night. Let's look at these people. You certainly have turned out to be a massive failure because you didn't win it, right? <laughs> uh, Rob Becker went on to have a. Very successful run on Broadway with a Broadway show, show one man show. Forty nine right? million dollars he made off of that. Did he make forty nine million dollars off of that? It, it, it takes me about seven years to make forty nine million dollars. I can't believe yeah. that guy did that. Uh, let's see here. Warren Thomas, of course, died, but he, in the meantime, uh, was a, uh, a writer, for instance, for the way one of the Way In shows. I think for uh, uh, the first Way yeah. In show, uh, he could have been a huge star. He just didn't have the the patience. Well, I mean, I, I have to say, and the discipline. Well, he also uh, had one other problem. And the problem was that he had phlebitis, which is, a, you know, your veins or something in your knee or something. And they had to give him a blood transfusion at San Francisco General. And that was about the time that AIDS started coming to the front. Okay. Yeah. And he got a bad transfusion and came down with full-blown AIDS. I mean, came, not full-blown, but AIDS. No, full-blown AIDS. He, he had the Carposi's sarcoma and everything. And luckily, the cocktails came along in time to save his life uh, because he was, I remember, remember he was on the edge of death. Uh, yeah, right. And that kind of killed his career for a while. Uh, yeah. He had it, a, was, yeah. it was tough. And, and, and Warren, you know, as, as you know, a lot of the guys that imbibed we all imbibed, but then there was a time to go home and party, and it was a time to to, yeah. to sober up. Yeah, and 
he just the party never ended. Party. I remember staying up. I mean, if you had to hang with Warren, you had to hang out all night. And like, and it, it, there was no one who was funnier. I just we would watch TV till seven o'clock in the morning. And the only way to stay up till seven in the morning was to do coke. And so we were up, <laughs> and I was up with him. He was yeah. making me laugh until I couldn't laugh anymore. Until I couldn't make any expressions. The only thing I could do is when he said something funny or watching TV, I would just do this. Uh, uh. He'd say something funny, and I go. Uh. <laughs> I had no more energy to even vocalize anything more than that. But he even getting that was rewarding to him. But he was still trying to get a laugh, and they, eh, you know, I just don't think of anyone twenty four seven who was funnier than Warren Thomas, like well, all day and all night. Towards the end of his life, uh, he was in New York. He was pretty well. The AIDS thing was being handled. Okay, it was it was in it, it was, was in tough. remission. Uh, it was tough for it was tough for him to see other people making it successful and yeah and 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 then also to just not get the appreciation of uh, you know, I mean as as Rick Chris Rock says, he's the funniest guy you never heard of. Exactly, and and off the top of his head, the best improvisational comedy I've ever. Yeah, I mean the, the funniest guy hands down to hang out with in a yeah, day. Yeah, I mean, the, but hands but down. what happened was is he I hung out with him quite a bit here in New York for a while. Good. And then all of a sudden, I get the news he's dead, and he died. And we've never been able to get a good explanation of, of what he died of, but I suspect it was some kind of complications from either that or it could have been drugs. You know, well, but it, this I, guy I, was I mean, brilliant. I would tell you what, in my opinion, I mean, from friends I know who could get clean and then go off it. I mean, like, hey man, I'm just gonna do it for one night. I'll just go another night. I'll yeah. just go again. Yeah. And it's just, it's, it's, I mean, I understand it now as a mature man more. I mean, just look, I want to deaden the pain. I'm going to go another night. I'm going to go. And then, like, um, your body can't take it anymore. I mean, yeah. I will say, like, you know, Robin Williams, I mean, the, it was the residual effects of what he did 30 or five years ago that I think finally comes back. It's like an upside down pyramid drugs. It yeah. comes. It, it's affected. Well, in his smaller. case, he had a disease. I'm trying to remember what it is now. I think he was misdiagnosed. I you honestly really do. do? I, think he, I think he was misdiagnosed, and the drugs. Because Doctor Drew Pinsky is a dear friend of mine. Yeah. Uh, um, I asked him about those drugs, mm -hmm. and um, I said, "Could those combination of the drugs that he was on cause depression?" And uh, he said, "Absa F and Lutely." Mm -hmm. And so, I mean. I do think, like, uh, while well-intentioned, those doctors killed him, in my opinion. Yeah. You know, I, I think they did. And I think the family agrees. And, you know, I tweeted that out, and I got 55,000 retweets from all over the world. And that's when Big Pharma attacked me. But, uh, you know, you can't go after those. Those are the monsters there, Big Pharma. It, what did, how did you attack them? How did they feel they were being attacked? Because I said the Big Pharma killed them. I said these drugs, you know, when I mean, you, have, you have America is on... You have like America's being constantly fleeced by big pharma. Mm -hmm. You have like you literally if we continue to go the direction that we're going, Alex, 50, 50 cents on every dollar that comes into that the gross dollar in America is going to go towards health care by 2030. I mean, it's, it's just it's unsustainable. I'll, I'll tell you something. I mean, it, I'll give you a good story about it. You'll love this story. I, I, uh, I have uh, IBS, irritable bowel syndrome. So there's mm -hmm. this drug. And uh, I took it once. The doctor said, here, try this. And I went out, and it cost me 300 bucks. And then I said to him, I, you know, if I need it again, I can't afford the 300 He says, oh, I can get you an exception. It'll only be 75 you Wow. Know? You know, so I was set. I was buying this stuff at $75. When I come down with a bad bout of it, I'd take this stuff, and it would, it would uh, uh, ameliorate the symptoms, right? Yeah. Uh, I stopped using it for a while because my stomach seemed to be fine. And about a year later, I, I wanted another prescription for it. And he gave me another prescription. And I, uh, he, I, I, he didn't get me the exception. Uh, oh, no, he tried to get me the exception. And they wouldn't do it, which would bring the price down. So I, now, I know that the price was 300 about four years earlier. I go into the pharmacy and I say, okay, I want to buy some of this. I it's got to be somewhere like around $300. She says, well, I will look and see how much it costs. And then I see her write something down, and she says, uh, here's what it costs now. 
and she hands it over to me, and it was $2,100 for 60 pills, okay? And uh, I said, that is absurd. You know, I mean, and they went after this guy because he took this AIDS thing, this AIDS drug, and raised the price, what, five or ten times or something like that. These people are doing the same thing with irritable bowel syndrome. They are. The, the thing about it is, like, if we don't nationalize our medicine like they do it in, in, in the UK, if we don't nationalize it, we're going to be in trouble. Just like if we don't nationalize Google and these search engines who are now putting a truth, you know, they're actually, you know, no longer going to like what's the most popular thing which would come up. Now they're just, they're sinking certain things that they decide. Who gets to decide what the truth is? Who gets to decide, you know, now they have a thing called the truth vault. Yeah. If America doesn't get behind these things and handle our, our health care and, and, and well, you know, let, let me finish the story to... though about the about the IBS. So all of a sudden, I just thought I'd try something. I I had said something for digestive problems and whatever, and it's a gummy bear thing, and it's an, yeah. a probiotic. And yeah, I took and that it. Works. I took it, and it cle- for for a year. I've been clear of any major IBS symptoms. Well, you know, I mean, that's the thing uh, most. Uh, yeah. you thank God that you found that because. Most problems that you have, the pharmaceuticals are very good. If you get I me, mean, hey, I love the American medical system. If you're shot, stabbed, run over by a bus, you better <laughs> have, a, have a massive coronary. You better hope it's in America. Yeah. Because we have this trauma care, especially getting shot. God bless these guys. They yeah. know how to fix shot, stabbed, baseball bat to the forehead. They know how to save you here. Yeah. Anything else they can't fix. And the pharmaceutical things, it helps the symptoms. But to get to the root cause of it. Mm-hmm. I mean, if you fix your own your own bacteria in, in your gut, you know, mitochondria, once you take antibiotics once, you're never the same again. You can kind of get back to more or less normal, but never 100%. So that gut bacteria is a real problem. And the problem is a lot of kids have this issue, and it causes when you have childhood obesity. Off the, I tell people this, and it's a shocking statistic, Alex. 54.1% of all children, 54, over half, have at least one chronic illness. Wow. That's crazy. Well, uh, but do you include in that, like when I was a kid, I had allergies. You don't include allergies in that, do you? If you have chronic allergies where you have to be constantly medicated, I would include that. Sure. No, my, my, what my parents did is I, they, they took me into a doctor and he gave me a sh- what they call a shick test in which they do your I arm have- with all kinds of stuff. And then they see which one blows up real good. Yeah. And uh, 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 they, they found out that a, a pet hair and a pollen were my two yeah, biggest too. triggers. So they moved to the country and bought me a cat. <laughs> and <laughs> within a, I, w- I was the kid in the, your cl- in the class you could hear coming a mile away because you could hear the wheeze. And that okay. happened for about six to eight months uh, during the first summer we were there. And all of a sudden all these allergies cleared up because what they yeah. did by exposing me to my allergy problems was, uh, yeah. yeah. Was, was, I was allergic to everything when I was a little kid, and my mom just slowly introduced stuff, introduced stuff, introduced stuff until I got better. Yeah, I think per, perhaps we get too too uh, 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 nice with our kids. We were too protective of them, and so I think, I mean, so we I, then I go, oh, well, to, you do well, we have to give him a pill and take care of this. No, let him wheeze his way through an allergy. Yeah, I, I think so too. I mean, I, I think temporary stuff is good medicine, but like we have to. Um, protect our kids and, and get them off drugs we have like you know there's 20 million kids are on some on, on some some uh, form of drug in america really? and um it ain't it ain't getting them better yeah uh, but now let's, think, let's, say, let's say your kid does get really sick and needs an antibiotic i mean you wouldn't go for it. it's a miracle drug yeah if they need to save your life it's a miracle drug yeah but but you know if you get like a little infection you know in your lung or something uh if it isn't that uh you know, yeah. desperate, then let them fight it through because, right. um, you know, it, it's just too much of a, um, a shock to the system to give them antibiotics. I was given antibiotics for everything when I was a kid and I didn't need it all those times. So we didn't know any better. Yeah. You go to the doctor that, you know, you, you want something. I think they're well-intentioned, but you can't just give antibiotics every time you need something. Oh, they used and, to think when I was a kid, they used to think certain things worked that really didn't. I, I, luckily I don't have thyroid cancer, but, uh, I had a sinus problem, and so they took me. I think it was to Kaiser, and they radiated my my sinuses. 
right? Because they thought that was a way of clearing things up. Well, luckily they didn't go for my thyroid because most people who were radiated in their thyroid got so thyroid and cancer. Yeah. Well, yeah. I tell you, you know, they, you know, the American Medical Association. That's why, like psychiatrists, they say if they if they could wear white coats, if they thought they could get away with it, they would do it. You know? Yeah. yeah. Because it's not, it's not really. Uh, um, they're not real doctors, yeah. you know, like all, all those drugs. I mean, some of them, I think some of the antidepressants have been a miracle drug for people to get them uh, to help get them uh, and do their daily stuff. But however, these are the same people that recommended, you know, electric shock therapy for people. Hmm. I mean, like, whoa. So we have to be really careful about well, what they decide in their diagnostics. What's what's a real thing? Yeah. And I think, you know, for for little kids. You know that they're not all going to be the same, and so some some will have some learning disabilities, and to drug them up is a mistake. Well, I'm at the age now where doctors look upon me as an annuity, uh, <laughs> you know. And and here's the thing I get from doctors now. Remember, I used to be well, okay, come back next year and let's take a look and see if this thing is any better, or any worse, or whatever. And well, yeah. now they go, come back and see me in six months, yeah. because they need the money. I it's know. Like I remember I, my dad. I, I my have dad to... was friends with a doctor, Alex, and he said. He said, my dad was friends with this guy. He was over the house and they were having drinks and smoking at the time because people used to smoke. Yeah. My dad smoked a pipe because of Hugh, Hef Hugh Hefner. Yeah. And um, uh, he, the doctor said, oh, I can't wait for the cold and flu season. My dad said, what? Yeah, God, I, I need to make some money. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah, money. Well, well, you know, it's not easy for doctors today. I mean, insurance companies are giving them a horrible time and and a lot of doctors are having to go to work for HMOs because they can't afford to have their own practice anymore so I do feel sorry for the doctors but you know come, tough, come back and tough. see me in six months I went to a urologist and my PSA went up a bit over a year like a point or something and and he uh, he said well take it I have to take a test in October he says take the test in October and then come see me in six months and we'll we'll uh, see if, if any if there's anything to worry about there and he happens to be a good doctor, but, you know, he could have said, ah, let's wait a year and see what it's like then, you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I'm, all, I'm all for waiting a little bit, too. Yeah. You know, and the main thing is you have to, Americans have to get healthy on themselves, like what you did. Yeah. And the probiotic is, 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 is an answer well, for a that lot was of a, After paying for this drug, after going through everything I had to do to somehow get one supply of it granted to me by the, by the pharmaceutical company... Yeah. Uh, it turned out that it was, you know, a $20 probiotic, a bottle of probiotics every month that cleared up my problem. I know, I know. That, that's the thing that people need to also address. And just, you know, if I would just tell people, for all your listeners yeah. out there, try to get a list on your refrigerator, alkaline foods, acidic foods, and try to go 80-20 as best you can. If yeah. you do 80-20, you age your, your organs. Now, are you, you're really a nut about this, aren't you? You're, you're, yeah, I've, I've become, you know... I become educated myself. I mean, sometimes I, I just had a ham, a ham and egg sandwich right now. Yeah. But I said, I know later today I'm gonna have to just do steamed vegetables and um, and have some hot water and lemon. I had a huge cup of dark coffee because we're going over the final list of bills for for the TV show with my accountants, my producers in the other room. Yeah. And they're all waiting for me. But I said, hey, I gotta talk to Alex right now. Yeah. And uh, so you know, but you just what you, what you want to do is is you want to age slowly and be healthy and enjoy things. You don't have to have this. Is a particular thing, the American culture yeah. has dementia. Where I, I, I flew to India. Yeah. They don't have dementia in India. They got a lot of other messed up problems that are, they're, you know, just as bad in other ways. Yeah. Bacterial infections, dirty water, and like other problems and yeah. diseases that are eradicated here. But they don't have dementia. And so what is the difference? Well, was, I'll tell you what the difference is. What, here's what I think. Okay. Every country has its disease every country has its lack of a disease uh yeah. i i was talking to uh, you, you remember a doctor uh, what's his name the guy the uh, weight loss guy i used his diet the uh low carbohydrate oh, yeah. diet yeah. dr atkins, atkins. I, I used to have him on my show here in new york yeah. and i said to him one day i said i was in europe and all the, uh, in spain all the people over there are so thin and here you come back you get off the plane it looks like cows grazing you know yeah. i said what what is the problem 
And he said it has some, he felt it had something to do with the soil that the food was grown in. Why certain races are thinner than others. I will tell you, I, I, just from my years and years of experience, yeah. it's a combination of things. One, we're carbohydrate addicted here in America. Two, you're 100% right, the nutritional, um, the, the soil uh, is, is depleted. A carrot today has half the same nutrition as a carrot 40 years ago, even an organic carrot. And three, our mitochondria is messed up, whether from taking antibiotics or also eating foods or eating animals that have been taking an antibiotics or also been eating this thing called glyphosate, which is sprayed on the wheat. So when people say people didn't used to have a, a, a problem with gluten with until glutens, 1997 yeah. Yeah. because they because they spray the machines and they spray the wheat with this supposed anti-fungal called uh, anti-mold thing is glyphosate. Glyphosate makes bugs explode. And it's just <laughs> around. So if it makes bugs explode. We're not that. What's different. it going to do to us? Exactly. Yeah, you know, so, I mean, now now it's, you know, it is the DDT of our day. The difference is back when the DDT was around, the chemical companies um, did not own every state house. I mean, they're really smart, these evil chemical companies and the ph evil pharma. They buy, literally donate to every state assemblyman, every state senator, every yeah. national senator, every national congressman. But you know something? I got to I, I gotta tell you something, Rob. I think that in the beginning, years ago, I think the tobacco companies were innocent. I think the chemical companies were innocent. And here's why I'm going to say that. is because they simply put this stuff on the market and went, oh, good, this DDT, it kills these things, right? This is good for us. And yeah. then after a while, they started seeing the evidence of how it was affecting human beings. And then they weren't willing to admit that maybe we should take it off the market. Right. So, That's right. And, then, then and the same thing was with profits. cigarettes. It's, it's their profits. And they're not going to do it. And but when you test your own product, as opposed to what the FDA should do, yeah. which the FDA should be an independent thing, where actually the FDA is completely funded by big pharma. I mean completely funded. Uh, just when you submit to do a new drug at the FDA, yeah. not to bore your listeners to tears, it's $50,000 as part of the submission process. So that is a de facto funding of the FDA. So the FDA is completely funded, and then there's a revolving door between people who work at the FDA and big pharma and big pharma going in the FDA and it's the same thing with the CDC and so the Center mm -hmm. for Disease Control it's the same crap and it's like we no longer have a government that's protecting the people they're protecting big business and like while I don't think it's a hundred percent evil I, I do think what happens is you have an abuse in the system because the system is there to be abused and yeah. so whenever you, you don't have any firewalls anymore yeah so I mean that's why people vote for guys like Donald Trump because they're going hey let's yeah. change something I'm willing to burn the house down yeah. and let's make another house. Yeah. Now, you, you let me just, uh, we have a little time left here. Let me just ask you, you, you a lot of times have come out with your political opinion places. Yeah. And that and has mean, gotten you into a lot of trouble. Sometimes I didn't even agree with you. I said, yeah, what's, but, what's wrong with Rob? <laughs> you know? I, I'm a, I mean, look, I, I'm, a, you know, I like the, uh, not the controversy, but I, I mean, I like to take the other issue. Yeah. I mean, it's so easy to make fun of Donald Trump. You can watch it five days a week. I want to make fun of the people making fun of Donald Trump. Yeah. Because that's, that's more, it's it's tougher. It's, you know, you know, it's, it's more, <laughs> you know but, but I, I like the opposite. Well, I, I have to admit that Trump is like shooting fi fish in a barrel. It is. I, yeah. I like making fun of Hillary, you know, because, or, or, or Trump supporter. I mean, I mean, uh, people who hate Trump. Because like for me, a Bernie Sanders supporter is a good fodder for exactly. comedy. I mean, like, yeah. what, was he going to be president for six months? What was the plan? Yeah, there? Mind you, we're not sitting here saying Trump is wonderful or anything like that. What no. we're saying is, is that the opposition also has its faults. And we Believe don't. Me, here's what I tell people in yeah. my live shows, Alex, and you should come to one of them one day. Yeah. I tell people, you think Syria cares more about Obama, like more Obama? You, th you think than Trump? You think you, people in Syria are saying, people in Syria are saying, we miss the days where we were being bombed by a tolerant and well-spoken president. <laughs> you know, come on, let's get real. That's why, like, you know, I, and, and look, it's fun to make fun of Hillary because she takes no personal responsibility for anything. I really can't stand her or her husband. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't like her, and and Bill was getting to me after a while because there was a kind of a sense of, I I can seduce anybody. You know, I'm not talking about sexually. I'm talking about his seductive quality, and I got yeah. a little tired of that seductive quality. Um, you know, there were a lot of other people I wish had run for president. Uh, I wish yeah, Biden I mean, had run for president. I would have voted for him in a heartbeat. You know, I'm from San Francisco. You know, I'm the most liberal guy ever. You and me, the yeah. same. You know, I was for, you know, 
for equality and race and gay rights and, and everything. I mean, who wouldn't be? I mean, these are our friends and family, yeah, brothers and sisters right, and parents. Right. So I'm all for that. But at the same time, I got to say, like, you know, when Hillary Clinton says, hey, if the ele- you know, half, you can't say half American population voted for Trump because they're racist. You can't say half, maybe a third. You can say a third. You can't say yeah. half. Yeah. You know, and I, and I said, like, Hillary Clinton had the audacity to say last week, hey, if the election was held October 27th, I'd be your president. I said, yeah, well, you know, if the Super Bowl ended in the third quarter, Atlanta would be the champion. <laughs> you know, if I was the same size I was when I was a baby, my dick would look huge. <laughs> Where does it end, Alex? You know, so in a way, that's more of an interesting place to go. I just played Boston, the Wilbur Theater, in front of 1,000 people. Yeah. Of the most liberal place you've ever met. And I was talking about, your, you know, the, the, the Nazi rally where they shut down the Nazis. They said there were 42 people who were Nazis there. And they, they had the decency to call themselves Nazis. They weren't saying they were, they weren't trying to be something they weren't. They're Nazis. They weren't, they said, don't shut them down, talk to them, listen to them. And that was great to hear the mayor of Boston say, we don't have racism in Boston. Yes, you have racism in Boston, it's Boston. Yeah. So not this part of Boston, you gotta go four blocks over here to have racism. Well, I know you have money things to deal with there at the, at the uh, uh, Snyder Mance as it were yes, yes. Uh, and uh, but before you go let's let everybody know that tomorrow which is Friday uh, the, uh, yes. the what's the date the 29th I guess tomorrow tonight, it, tonight at midnight it, tonight at midnight you can turn on Netflix and you can see how many episodes are there there are eight I eight? saw eight it's, yeah it's eight half hour movies yeah yeah and it's it's fun it's fun. Thank you very I, much. We, we love the first batch, and we haven't finished the second batch yet, but it, it, it lives up to the first batch. Thank you. And your and your wife is amazing on that show. Oh, thank Just you. Just amazing. It. And you're really and you're She's but the, the down part of it is you're terrible. So <laughs> <laughs> I know. I usually have to put up with that part. If yeah. you can get through that, you get to my wife. The kid kid even reads her lines better. I know she's beautiful. I love it. It's just an excuse to get my family in there. Yeah, yeah. It's a home movie, is what it is. Yeah, it's it's been fun, but we we spent nine months writing it, and I'm really proud of uh, the shows. Cool. The last episode, you have to see. Ennio Morricone does the score. It's unbelievable. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. I mean, it's just like you know. I got a ninety-five. How did, how, how'd you get Ennio Morricone to write? I called them. You called him. He, I called him. His son speaks a little bit of English. He speaks no English. Absolutely none. Ennio Marconi, uh, in case people don't know, good and the bad and the ugly, once upon a time in America, Bugsy, I could go on and on. Probably the Tarantino. greatest. Uh, Hateful Eight, which he won the Academy yeah. Award for. Yeah. And uh, he's just the greatest composer. He's just right from the heart. And so yeah. you hear the last 10 minutes of this thing and you realize why I, you know, spent so much money on it and it was so worth it. Because yeah. the last ten minutes is all his beautiful music. Well, so it, it, it it's a fun show, and the one question I guess I I've always wanted to ask somebody who's in the position you're in, you play a real asshole. Yes. And it's called real <laughs> Rob, and yet I don't know real Rob as that kind of asshole. All right. What but isn't it more fun? Is it the comedian in you that says I don't care how people perceive it, what people perceive of me? This is a good character. That's the, you know, I get offered questions, I get asked questions a lot. That's the best question I've been asked in in years. The truth of it is, I mean, it would be so, it's so egocentric to make make myself look good. I think it's way funnier. I mean, the best compliment I've ever gotten in this business was the real genius of Saturday Night Live is this guy named Jim Downey. And he said he was the writer. He's been, he wrote Jane, you ignorant slut. He's the guy been there for years and years. And um, he still does all the political stuff there. All the best stuff that you liked, he writes. And, um, he said to me, Rob Schneider never wasted time trying to look cool. I never cared how I looked. Yes. I wanted to be funny. Yeah. And like, it's just funnier playing an a-hole. I mean, my favorite guys, I mean, the best sitcoms ever were just terrible people. Despicable, terrible people. And that's when I wanted to do an updated... Faulty Towers. Music. Faulty it's Towers, a, yeah, a yeah. perfect example of that. It's Faulty Towers, being the biggest asshole you can be, cheating, lying, stealing if you can and it's a reverse I love Lucy my wife is Lucy and I'm I'm sorry my wife is Ricky Ricardo and I'm Lucy and, and I'm the biggest prick Basil faulty Lucy you've ever found <laughs> and that's fun for me and if you get yeah. to the end you'll really see yeah. it it comes to a great place well it's terrific and I I'm I'm so happy for you and I was talking to Bubs the other day he said he went into a, like a Whole Foods with you and you were mobbed 
yeah, and, they and, they and he said, I didn't, you know, I know he's, he's done a lot, but I didn't think he'd be mobbed. And I said, well, you know, I mean, he's very recognizable, but... Um, I'm the, the same size I am on TV as I am in person. The, the thing that bothered me most, and I got to tell you this because I'm protective of you because I like you, okay? Hey, I love uh, you. Is uh, the only time I ever hate Family Guy is when they kid you. Oh, thank you. I appreciate yeah. it because I thought it was a kind of a cheap shot. Yeah, I, I, felt, well, I felt the same way and because you're my friend. I was very protective and I said, I don't like that. Oh, Fuck thanks. Seth MacFarlane. They are Orville no. sucks. I, I, I'll tell you, the thing about it is, like, if you're lucky enough to get into a position, and I've been around long enough now, whereas, I be, you know the, you know what Ann Beats of Saturday Night Live said, yeah. you can only be avant-garde so long, and then you become guard. And, you know, we've become guard, yeah. Alex. Yeah. And, and you have to just kind of accept it and uh, just hope that the, if you're lucky enough to still do what you love and make funny stuff while you can, it's a window. I mean, Faulty Towers is 13 episodes. I don't know how many... I've already done 16 of these. I don't know how many I'll do. But yeah. if I never work again, I feel blessed and uh, I've been very lucky. And I, I just, I, what I want to do now in my life is introduce my wife to people because I think she's wonderfully talented and thank you for your kind words about her. I just want to do what I love and, and spend time and talk to people like you that I love and admire for mm -hmm. years. You were a supporter to all of us back in the day. And then I was talking to Dana Carvey about you. I was talking to... Uh, you know, to Larry Bubbles Brown, and it said, you know, hey man, Alex is still out there. We love him, and it's like he made a difference in our careers when we needed you. Yeah. We well, you, somebody, you'll all, you'll all be invited to the funeral. <laughs> That's many years away, buddy. But hey, uh, I love you, and I'll always be there for you, man. Anytime. Hey, can man. we do you, this? You were, can you we... were a supporter from way back, and I got to tell you, man. That meant the world to us. It really did. Yeah. From Bobcat to okay. you know Robin Williams and all the guys who you were you know had on and, and you know all the guys and a lot of them are gone now, man. But but we'll never forget it. Thank yeah. you, Alex. Yeah. Uh, but I, I and I hope we can do this again soon because this yeah. has been really good. Because you're 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 one of the better people to talk to because you've got a lot of depth. You'll talk politics. You, you know you talk about a whole bunch of things. And I I really would like to do it. Maybe another month or something. I'll give you a, a absolutely. Well, why don't you watch the rest of the episode? I'll watch the rest of them. Yeah. Well, because like the, I'm so proud of like especially the last. Uh, episodes 37 minutes they're all half hour movies yeah but the last one is remarkable i mean i just was really proud well, of it well we're, we're about halfway through them now you know okay. i just got them last week and you know my wife had to watch all her little things you know her netflix binges and yeah, i said well here, here's a good netflix binge hey rob thank you for being with us hey, anytime yeah. alice let's talk soon okay I'll, I'll, after you talk after you're done with these we'll talk next week come on okay okay well i will i'll uh, i'll uh, well, i'll stick around after this and i'll you know we'll talk we'll anyway uh, uh let's bring this to an end ladies and gentlemen rob schneider his show starts on netflix at midnight tonight yeah you can do it this is gabnet the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And yes, thank you so much, Rob Schneider. We're going to have him back again because he's he's got a lot of depth and he's a lot of fun. And uh, he's a nice guy. I like him. I've always liked him. Uh, and, uh, you know, and is, is his wife gorgeous or what? And you should see the series. The series is really an amazing, amazing program. Uh, it, it's special, it's different, uh, and I think I, I, I think I can easily recommend it to you. It's on Netflix, if you have Netflix, and it starts, uh, well, if you're watching our show live right now, you got about an hour and 17 minutes before it goes on on Netflix, all around the globe. So wherever you're listening to us, you can say, see real Rob, although uh, that is not really the real Rob, so far as I know Rob. Okay. Anyway, uh, I've just uh, gotten everything ready here. And so we will go to the citizens panel a little bit late tonight because we got into a long discussion with, uh, with uh, uh, Rob and uh, well worth it. So now it's time for you to call. The lines are open. Then we do what we call our citizens panel, which is not just one person at a time, but Upwards to maybe nine people at a time we've done. We've done actually with me 13, I think, at one point, uh, at one time. 
all talking about the same things. And let me turn on the on the air light. That makes it official. Okay. So you can start calling as I sit here and wait for you to call. I hope uh, I hope that uh, I didn't scare all the citizen panel away because of uh, of our guest. Uh, but if I did, to hell with you. <laughs> Anyway, uh, if you want to call us, uh, GabNet Live is our Skype ID, all right? GabNet Live is the Skype ID. And uh, you, you might want to just ask us to add you as a contact, but I think I've got it set so that anybody can call in, all right? So let's, uh, let's do that. Anyway, ah, here, first one off. Uh, 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 off, uh, off, the, off, the, uh, off the ramp. And onto the highway, literally, is our friend uh, Brian Ludwig. Hello, Brian. Hello. Yep. And and uh, he, you're you're in your is that your car? It is. Yeah. So you're on your way home now. I am. Yeah. You did a full day of work. And and what are you listening to on the headsets? Us. Yes. That's good. That's cool. Don't, don't get into an accident though, because you can't hear what's going on. You know. So. It's not ever been an issue for me. Yeah. Anyway, I, um, and we're being joined by uh, Charlene. Are you there, Charlene? Are you? Are, they, are, they, are you there, Charlene? Yes. Yeah, can you see me? Or? Yeah, I can see you. I can see you okay. Oh. You can see you just fine. You're driving down the road with Brian over over here. Uh, here. I know. I've, I've always wanted to see Brian drive. Yeah. What? What, 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 is, what is all that noise? I think it's you, uh, Brian. I think there's some noise coming from your side. So mute when you're not talking, okay? And hello, okay. To Tim. And hello to Tim. How are you, Tim? Great. Yeah. So anyway, um, and uh, Alex. what? Alex. Yes. You know, last night you asked me why I called. Yeah. Oh no, the night before last. I called tonight because Hugh Hafner died, and I hope Tom Yamaguchi doesn't get mad because he does the dead people, right? Well, he no, but he died last night. We announced it on the show. Oh, did you? Because yeah. I was listening to everything, and I missed the last half of the, yeah. the oh. little end of the show because I heard most of the show. By the night. way, guess who's, who's, who's calling? Ah, Matt. Hello, I Matt. heard I heard you talking about me last night, well, man. Yeah, I was talking about <laughs> you because uh, my one of my my ex girlfriends wrote, like wrote a nasty note and said, "Why where why is it nothing but old men and no women and no nobody younger?" And I said, "Well, we got this guy Matt, but he hasn't been calling lately, and he's like a young broth of a boy." That's right. You know, or I can and, fake it. So Brian, how old are you, Brian? Uh, I am 35. Oh boy, you're you're really loud tonight for some reason. I feel like he's driving an Uber or something. Yeah, no, that you you're really loud. You're 35. You're how old, Matt? Uh, how old am I? Fuck. Uh, 91, uh, 25. I'll be 26 next month. You mean you? I had to ask you your age, and you had to count back to figure out what age you were. So the thing is, once you turn 21, you don't care anymore. You're like, yep. you know, you don't pay attention to what age you are. Well, now that I'm 25, too, my insur my uh, car insurance went down, which is good. Yeah. So yeah. I, I've been in a few uh, few accidents. So mine was as high as, uh, what was it? When I was on with my wife, yes. we were at uh, about like two, just north of 200 a month. And uh, by myself, I got down to like 180. Now I'm down to, since I turned 25, my uh, insurance renewed this month, actually. So now I'm down to 140. So living large. Wow. I have a son. I have a son his age. So I understand what he's talking about with the car insurance and all that. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah, car, I get health insurance for free through my company. So. Oh, OK. But you don't care like my son because you're so young. You never. Yeah, I don't. Fit, I don't right? fucking I don't go to the doctor. I, got, insurance, right? I pay for dental insurance. I pay like uh, 40 bucks a month for dental insurance and I never go. So. <laughs> yeah, but but the dental insurance is is bullshit in a lot of ways because it's only like only about fifteen hundred dollars they pay out in a given year. So, yeah, you know, so it's, you know, but it's something, you know, it's something. Hey, hey Matt, do you have insurance through your parents at all? 
Uh, no, no, no. I, I get it through my company. Well, he's 25. I, I got off. He's I got off my parents' insurance once I got a job out of college. I uh, okay, because under Obamacare, you still be covered until age 26. Know what he's talking about? Yeah, I, yeah. I got I got insurance through my company once I turned uh, once I was 22 and got got a job out of college. How much? What do you, how what many, do you do? What? Uh, I'm, in, I'm in marketing right now. Yeah. Oh, good for you. You have a college degree and stuff. Right yeah, now. yeah, yeah, yeah. How much good do you pay you. into your insurance every month, or don't you have to? My my company insurance, I don't have to pay a dime. That, uh, then you're working for a lovely company. Don't ever yeah. leave them. Don't and, ever and leave for, them. When I was with my spouse too, um, I didn't have to pay anything because she didn't get insurance through her uh, through her um, her work. So as long as she couldn't get insurance, my company paid 100% of hers. But if she could get insurance, then I would have to pay $300 a month for the both of us. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It, wor it worked out for me. No, okay, basically. well that, that's good. That's very good. Um, so uh, so you're you're insured, which is good. And uh, I am. Hold on a second, I'm just paying trying. into the system, man. I not only do I'm, I'm I feel like I'm a cook and bottle washer on this show. You know, not only do I have to do the show, but I also run the video and I run the audio. Uh, One man and, band. So what what what's new with you, uh, Matt? Because we haven't heard from you in a while. Uh, I can't sell my fucking house. I, I'll, I'll tell you. I can't, yeah, I can't yeah, get yeah. A good angle keep on the this camera thing. there, then we can see you because with the light in the back of you, it, yeah, it, it's it, it's hard. I got to balance it on my knee right now. So it, you, uh, <laughs> you don't have a table. Is that how much the I wife? Got, I have a table. The wife didn't leave you with I anything. My, I got my uh, my mic, my nice microphone on the yeah. table. Now Let's I'm trying to remember. Did, you got married, right? Uh, yeah, 20, 23. Yeah, got you got married, like and, and, then, and then how long did the marriage last? Like a year and a half. A year and a half. And Any then, kids? Any kids? No, 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 no. No, no. kids. Oh, I, got a do I got a dog. She's... Good for you. <laughs> yeah, did you have to fight over the dog, or was she happy to, you know? No, we, we had a dog and a cat. Um, the cat's with her. Unfortunately, the cat has, uh, what is it called, like H... HCV or something like this. She's oh, got a yeah, large a heart, right. and she's got like six months to live. I mean, it's oh. it's pretty devastating. She's only two years old, you know, just a super young cat. We we you know she was a purebred. Um, Is that the kitty leukemia? I think they call it kitty leukemia. Or no, maybe. Eight, no, 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 no. It's it's something with an enlarged. It's um. So they she took her to a vet or to the vet for her like yearly checkup or something. Mm -hmm. And um, it was a different vet. And they said, oh, uh, you know, she's got a heart murmur. And they were like, okay. And they're like, well, that's that's kind of common in cats for some cats. You know, it could be nothing. And um, then we ended up going to, well, I didn't, but uh, she took her to um, a cardiologist, like a cat cardiologist or something or other. <laughs> <laughs> as bizarre as it sounds, yeah. And the the cardiologist was like, "Yeah, she's got this this rare condition, How and much uh, she's got an enlarged heart." They took X rays and everything. Her heart. How much, like, by fine. the way? Let me ask you because you don't have animal insurance, right? Oh, I, I didn't I didn't pay anything. Yeah, but I mean, uh, but who? Somebody's got to pay the vet. Oh, yeah. It was you know, it's been like I think the amount of money they her and her mom have spent has been like three or four thousand dollars. Jesus on just Christ! Tests for the cat and, and medicine cat. and all that. Yeah, and she, and she's got uh, they they got to give her four pills twice a day, um, and she's still got you know six months to live. It'll be a miracle if she makes it past then, but uh, it, it's sad. But uh, it, you know, I'll tell and, you something. It used to be when you went to a vet, the vet was the cheapest doctor you had. He would he, now he, it's he, worse than people. No, no, it, what, no, what it is is all of a sudden these people who are, I always loved vets because I felt they were only you know they had to go to medical school too for that, but they chose to uh, do animals. They say it's harder. Uh, uh, it's yeah, harder and that, they chose and, to do <laughs> animals. And I always considered it a calling more than anything else because, you know, the, we get the bill and it was 15 bucks, you know. And now I think that one day somebody just got greedy and said, look, you know, people love their pets. People will pay anything to keep their pets alive. So let's charge them an inordinate amount of money. And that's what's happened. And now... 
insurance. My my business manager had his dog get sick, and by the time they were through, he'd put out eight grand. That's ridiculous. You know. Yeah, uh, I had at, um, at what point, my my, uh, my old boss at my last yeah. job paid uh, paid like six grand to try to keep her dog alive, and the dog ended up dying. And she just paid six grand for nothing, you know. Really? Jesus Christ. And you know what I'm worried about tonight? We don't have Phil here. Phil, I, I, I messaged Phil because I was trying to get on. It was yeah. uh, mm. it was like 10.35 or something, and I messaged him. I was like, is Alex on tonight? And he said, uh, he said yeah, check his Facebook feed. So I did, and, uh, and he said it's gonna. he's out with the... Uh, with Faye and her kids, and he's not. It, it's a feel-free Thursday. Well, right. he didn't. He didn't announce it ahead of time. Usually, he announces it ahead of time. But look, yeah, without good. Phil, we've got a full house right now. Good. Yeah. yeah. So. Fuck him. <clears throat> Fuck him. Yeah. He'd break. He'd break. He'd break <laughs> the system. Tied up. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yes, Jeff. So, uh, a fellow who used to work for me. Yeah. It was a veterinarian surgeon. Yeah. And he was a terrific surgeon, and he could do almost anything uh, because he was he not only did surgery, but he used to teach, too. So he yeah. taught how other surgeons became better. And at Tufts in Massachusetts, the medical students, the human medical students, and the vet people go to this, a lot of the same courses together yeah because it's in the same building and uh and his his wife did um eyes she did eye surgery yeah so we were always kidding like what she do buy glasses for the dog yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know when i hear about people you know you've got your dog he's sick and now it's going to cost eight thousand well, you can either pay the eight thousand and keep him alive, or you cannot pay the eight thousand and get ready for him to die. It's like a crapshoot. What man. are you going to do? You know, if, 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 if Rob, if any of your cats got sick and all of a sudden the bill came to eight thousand bucks, you'd pay it, right? He'd pay. He'd pay. That's why I have insurance. You have the insurance. Mm -hmm. Now, how good is that insurance? Is, yeah, is I'm there kind a of limit? worried about the insurance because I got offered the insurance too, but I'm like, I, I don't know how they'll they'll try to weasel their way out of it. And, and if the cats well, if the cats leave the house, do they still stay on the insurance? What do you mean leave the house? Well, you know, like oh, oh. Cats or cats. Cats <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they uh, if they're catting it'd be too around. late to get it'd be too late now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To get insurance for your ex's cat, mm -hmm. yeah, doesn't, doesn't yeah. No, I, I I tried oh. originally. Um, I I was on a chat. I it's looked up, you know, the, the best. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. And um, and I went on. I went on and looked up, you know, like best insurance for pets or whatever. And I tried to get it. And uh, and they the first thing they ask you is, is there any type of medical conditions that your your cat has or whatever? And you. You know, you, you're not going to see existing conditions. Yeah. Yeah. And, and once, yeah. once you say that, they say, no, we can't take you. Right. So. We need the Affordable Care Act for pets. Yeah. For cats. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, listen, <laughs> we, we really yeah. can't get Start a decent version of it for oh, us. Trump, so Trump what? care for pets. Yeah. <laughs> you imagine them arguing over that one? Yeah, it'll take them forever. Take them forever. But, no, you, you know, it is an area where I think, I think the average person – would pay more money to save their pet's life than their wife's life. I really oh, do. Are you fucking yeah. me? I just went to the vet last week because Coco had a rash. Yeah. So, like, nothing serious. And he went to the vet, looked, checked around. Him. He says, it's going to be 270 bucks. So I said, yes, my God. <laughs> like, it don't even matter. Yeah, but, but, but you know, I if I were you, you guys, if you have pets, especially you're going to get a second dog, right, uh, Tony? Oh, I didn't tell you yet. Oh, yeah, I'm thinking about it. Yeah. Yeah, you're thinking about well, it. So, you've been thinking but, about but, it for months. But but, uh, but I would get pet insurance. I really would. You know, yeah, because with the way it costs today. And now, let me ask you, Rob, is is there a limit on the amount of money they'll pay out or the percentage they pay out? You could, it depends on the level of insurance you get. Um, I don't remember. Uh, they, uh, I, they pay a ton of money uh, out. You have to. There's a deductible, mm -hmm. 
like 500 bucks for the year or something like that. Yeah. And it doesn't cover anything, uh, you know, any normal, it doesn't, there's no wellness care, right? There's no, uh, you know, it, it, it's only when you reach that $500, what's 300 or 500, I don't remember what it is. It's been yeah. a long time. Actually, it doesn't have the core it. benefits like Obamacare. Right, it doesn't have the core benefits. Uh, healthy pause, let's see. Healthy pause, it's called. That's what it's called. <laughs> yeah, healthy pause, pet insurance. Which means they, yes. don't, they don't fix your cat, they freeze it till they have cheap technology to bring it back. <laughs> right, right. Uh, healthy uh, pause, uh, 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 USC. But how much do you pay a month for that? Maxi's policy, here it is. Well, Reimbursement, Bill, Bill 70%. Like percent annual deductible is 500 bucks. Okay. They it's reimburse 70% after that. Uh, and, and there's no limit on that. Right. And how much do you and pay? And the premium is $27 a month. Oh, God. I'd, ta- I'd do it in a second. Yeah. And that's it's the best. It, that, is that the best level? Uh, I, that's a good question. I think it is. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Uh, like when I had Maxi in, uh, I was just getting ready to get towards the 500 bucks because I had Maxi in for, she got all those... Uh, Oh, no, it was, uh, what That's do you call that, the, with the needles? Oh, oh acupuncture. Acupuncture. She got all those acupuncture. By the way, we have a royal flush now with John Rockwell. I, feel, I figured I'd have to come in. But I have to say, hey, Alex. <laughs> yeah. Yes, Alex? Yes, Tim. Uh, 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 Animal Planet's online, too. They'd like to pick up your show for syndication. No, oh, okay, fine. <laughs> Good. <laughs> you know, you mentioned wives and not having the money to, to save your wife. That explains polygamy. You know, you got backup. You got backup. Yeah. You, got, you got one you in got the pocket. Up. You got one in the pocket. Yeah. Hey, hey, I, Ro- I think the interview with, with Rob was just absolutely excellent. Rob's, oh, you yeah, know, I liked it too. Rob's a great guy, and Rob is, is a very political guy. And some of his pol- pol- politics I don't necessarily agree with, but he's just, you know, he, he, he was, he's more than just talking to a guy who's trying to be funny. Oh, boy. Well, I don't quick. think I, it says he's add to quick. group. Michael Klein, I would love to add you to the group, but I, I'm going to have a problem here. You want me to jump here. Give me a chance. Uh, would you do that for a while, Tony? Yeah, yeah I'll do it. Okay. I'll talk to you later. Uh, because my problem is, is that okay. once I get that many people, right? Okay, I'll let you go. Okay. Once I get, get that it. many people, he's jumped, as you can see, off to the side. So let me get rid of Tony and... Uh, uh, let me see here. Let me remove uh, remove from this group, and that will there. Now we can see. Uh, wow. Now we can see That's Michael a group. Klein. Hello, Michael. How are you? Good. Hi, Alex. Like, uh, yeah. Uh, love. I love the interview with Rob too. Oh, really? Oh, good. I'm glad. Hi, uh, Ian. He he's going to do it more. We're going to do more with him. Uh, oh, good. You know. Boy, I can't get rid of John Rockwell's name up there, but that's fine. Uh, yes, uh, Michael. Mike. My neighbor used to be a vet. He also, besides being a vet, he also took care of the zoo animals. Off to the side, he made big money with the uh, farm animals. Mm-hmm. Which, I, I mean, I was surprised. Just, how do you do it? Just, I just do it. When the zoo calls me for in for something, I have to do it. He does the surgery right there for the zoo animals. You know, make sure they're healthy. Right. But he gets up. Uh, well, my first beagle, no problem. I think it was 100 bucks for something. Now, the last surgery I had on my other beagle was about 400 bucks. He had a tumor on his uh, deal, but luckily it wasn't cancerous. So he lasted for another three years after that. Yeah. Well, uh, oh, I hear and hit. Look, Michael's got himself his dog. What kind of dog is that, Michael? Parker. It's an English Springer Spaniel. Uh, in- English good. Springer Spaniel. Let me blow that up full It'll screen here so you <laughs> can see this. And, and I have I have pet insurance too, and they pay about uh, about seventy percent, I'd say. Really? Okay, yeah. so that's about that's what that's what Rob said. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, boy, that's a that's a handsome dog. My dog's sleeping. I don't know if you can see her. Uh, Black. Uh, uh, Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, she's black. Yeah. Oh, then, then we lost Matt. Uh, Matt, call back, okay? Uh, you got disconnected. Uh, <laughs> I love that Rob acknowledged how much 
you contributed to the success right, of me those too. comedians back in the great. day. That was good. He gave you props, Alex. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I, I was very nice of him to do that, but you know, I, I, I did, it, I did it because I enjoyed doing it. It wasn't like I, I just so loved these guys. I wanted to give them a career. They gave me a big career in San Francisco. So you know, uh, I have to, I have to thank them for their participation. Uh, the that was the best part about listening to you out here in San Francisco. Is we used to crank you up on the warehouse when we were loading trucks. Yeah, and it was Bubs and Rob and just everybody you had in there was just the best part of the show. I think it was yeah. you know just everything. Ruben was great. <laughs> you know, it, it was an amazing. It was an amazing group of people. Uh, yeah, and uh, you know, I mean, it's very nice of him to say what he says, but it was all mutual. You know, I mean, they benefited me. I benefited them. Yeah. Uh, and it's nice to know that I could help some of these people get known because otherwise they wouldn't have been. Uh, and uh, that, it caused me to go see a couple of them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and a lot. some of them got big careers as a result of it, too. I mean, Bobcat left uh, San Francisco and went on and yep. did, did pretty well, although I think his career ended up in kind of a mediocre place. Yeah. But Rob, for instance, you know, if you if you look at Rob's work, body of work, you suddenly are amazed. He's done over 80 movies. Do you realize yeah, that? Yeah, he's done a lot of stuff that you don't realize it until you look at his, his bio. Yeah. Deuce Begalo. I mean, for a while, he was in every Adam Sandler film in some. Yeah, yeah. In right. some... Well, he's good friends with Adam Sandler. Yeah. Uh, in fact, he closed with the line he used in every Adam Sandler movie. You can do it. Yeah. You can do it. You can friend. do it. Adam can do a movie without him or something like that. Well, no, Adam does. No, Adam does now, but uh, uh, but uh, you know, Rob. Uh, Rob, I like Rob. Rob's a nice guy, and I get very mad when I see Family Guy do these numbers on him because they're very mean about it. And I didn't. I didn't hear the interview, but I'm. Uh, I'm going to listen to it tomorrow. Well, I'm excited yeah, about yeah. it. I, I liked his last interview that you did with him. Uh, yeah. That was like a year ago. Well, or this, something. this time was a while we ago. have the ability. That was good. We had the ability to do it uh, live. I mean, do it on. Do it rather uh, on video, and then show the video so that you could actually see him and so on. And oh, nice. and his gorgeous wife. My God, mm. she's, she's oh really beautiful, I and, she, and she's part. very funny on the on the show. So if you have Netflix, try and watch it. Uh, oh, so, so she plays the wife in his Netflix show. Yes, and, and she's his actual wife. Yes, so she's right. the wife in both. Okay, and they actually nice. shoot it in their house. It's oh, not. Wow. It's not. It's not a. Uh, it's not a reality show. It's a comedy. Uh, but oh, wow. uh, uh, it. Uh, you know, it's done in their house, and they, they, their child plays their child, and oh, their boy. dog plays oh, their man. dog. And, have, uh, have you gotten around to Hugh Hefner yet? The, uh, well, I, we oh, talked we about him last too, night, well. and I was going to maybe talk about him again tonight because I think he had a very important life. You know, I think you know him, Alex. With all the uh, all the news things I've seen, is nothing but the magazine, and there was a hell of a lot more than just the magazine. Well, there was a that. there was a lot that he did. There was a lot oh, of yeah. money that he did. You did you hear about that story where he had? Um, I think it was in that one Playmates book, uh, Kendra Wilkinson or, Kendra. or whatever yeah. her name is. Yeah. yeah, she said that he, he, he took Viagra, laid on a bed, and had had Playmates fuck him for two minutes each and, and just rotated two minutes each and had the girlfriend wipe his cock after each time. <laughs> a girl good cock. life. Well, that's Kendra Wilkinson after all. I mean, and... <laughs> and 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 I don't be, I don't be, I don't believe I don't believe I don't believe a thing that comes out of her mouth unless it's a dick. Unless it's yeah. a dick. <laughs> you can't argue that. Yeah. Uh, but but, oh but I have Hefner man. was I think a very important person in the 20th century. I think we are where we are sexually because of you, Hefner, and the and right. the and the and the the, the uh, doors he opened up. I think that uh, uh, civil he spent you know he spent a lot of his time and money on civil rights and promoting yep. civil rights in his magazine. People forget the interviews that he did. I mean, he didn't interview. They didn't interview with Fidel Castro for Christ's sake. You know, I mean, the, did the, you ever meet him, Alex? Uh, yes, once. 
And oh, really? I met him when I was invited to go to the mansion for dinner. Oh, wow. Uh, for, Did you for, go? For, it, was, it was Sunday. It was movie night on Sunday. And, yeah, I went. And there were maybe about... A, <laughs> Did you? Really? There were about 100 people there. And uh, they served... You know, I still remember to this day, you know, you go some places and they have a buffet and it's like a hot plate, you know, and they feed you, right? Mm -hmm. This was the best buffet food i've ever had in my life i mean the steaks were great the you know the pasta was to i mean everything was great about it the only thing that kind of put me off was you walk in and you you don't want to buy an image okay but you walk in the door and when the first thing you see is hugh hefner in his pajamas I was going to ask you, was yeah. you know, <laughs> in the red robe. <laughs> you go, you want to walk, just run up to him and, and grab him and say, man, put some clothes on. You know, I mean, it was you're weird. having a party. Yeah. There are guests you invited over. Get out of your pajamas now. He's got to always be ready to get laid. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And then at the end of the night, at the end of the night, he makes this very grand gesture. The, the Playboy Mansion, the main room has like two stairways that both wind up in the same place, but they go up either side of the room. And he walks up the stairway with the chosen playmate. All right, and then they disappear. And then the party goes on until whenever it goes on, but you is now, I don't know, off fucking the playmate somewhere. But it's, it, the gesture is a very dramatic one. Alex? And so I had this, wait a minute, hold on a second. So I had this dream of getting Hefner to go along with me. I'm making a small little film in which we do this. It's a Playboy party, you know? It's movie night, and, uh, and he's, he's hosting everybody. And at the end of the night, he walks up the stairway, and he waves goodbye to everybody and walks off with the playmate, and then she goes one direction, he goes another direction down a back stairwell, gets in a car that drives him across town in L.A. to a shabby-looking house where he gets out, goes up the stairs, Opens the door and says, "Honey, I'm home." And these these two <laughs> snotty kids with this these shabby wife are there. And he says, uh, oh, "Did you have a good geez. night?" Yeah, it was okay. You know. Uh, you think that guy ever jerks off, or does he just like get laid all the time? Uh, I, I got laid all the time, and I still jerked off. Uh, I feel like you would <laughs> never have to, though. Well, yeah, but they, you know, jerking off is a special thing unto itself. That's true. Yeah, no. that's true. He's got a staff to jerk him off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's, got a staff. He's, he's got an assistant to <laughs> yeah, jerk him Alex, off. Yeah. Did you hear that thing that they were selling the mansion, but like you had to have Hugh living in it? Yeah. They sold it. They that, was, sold. that happened like that last year. They, they, they yeah. sold it about a year, year and a half ago. To but and and the stipulation was is that for the rest of his life, Hugh Hefner could live in the. In the uh, in the mansion, and so they yeah, agreed to that. That's it now. He's and, dead. Right? And today, the, and maybe, the guy who bought him. it, the guy who bought it, I'm trying to remember what he's famous for. He has he's famous for something. You know, wait, Twinkie. Twinkies. 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 I, I read there's Twinkies. Twinkies. Yeah. Whole yes. Whole Holy shit. Yeah. So anyway, he uh, he bought the mansion, and he lives next to the mansion. And he, he, you know, he made a comment on Hugh Hefner's death and said, we're so sorry to see him go because he was such a wonderful guy and, you know, whatever. He probably strangled and then, him. But I, I, I wanted to have this guy just say, but now there's a room for rent, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think it, I read that. All the girls have moved out, that, though. That. Yeah. Did anybody else read? I didn't read the whole thing. I'm sorry. But I thought I saw maybe it was something funny about his death it's not just a, you know like he, he passed away well there are a couple of interesting things about his death number one where he's going to be buried next to Marilyn I heard right next to Marilyn yeah, Monroe he the it, next left to hand, you left to uh, so I think it's on the left hand side so that's why I found it on uh, by the grave and he says it's going to be on the left hand side of Marilyn Monroe not too, you know, yeah, like, he, he bought it about 15 right. 20 years ago for $25,000 and he even, I even saw an interview he did where he said, well, I'm going to be buried. I'm going to be buried next to Marilyn Monroe, which is fitting mm -hmm. because she was the first woman on the cover of the first Playboy, mm -hmm. you know, and um, he helped start the whole and thing. It, yeah, it was that uh, he was ha not having a lot of luck until he got Marilyn's. If you remember, because you watched. Yeah, you watched the. Uh, that thing yeah. Alex talked about on Amazon. Yeah. 
It was, was the minute the, that he got those pictures that Playboy really took off. Well, no, that was the first issue. It was the first right, one. Right, but he wasn't getting very much interest in the that magazine the right. until he went and <laughs> right. spent all that money on clearing those Mon Marilyn Monroe now, pictures. Now, here's, here's the big question. They, they got the Marilyn pictures. They're ready to go to publication. They've got the name of the magazine, but it, they never used it, and it was called Stag Party. Stag. Yeah, stag, stag party. party. I was going to say, right. Stag, stag party. party. If he had called it yeah. Stag Party, do you think he would be famous today? No. Well, you know no. why he it did it. Well, I think he would have. I think. I think it wouldn't have. It wouldn't have taken off as much. But I don't think a name defines you that. Uh, Playboy, that much. a good name. I mean, the impact that he had. I think it might have been like seventy percent of the value. It wouldn't have been a hundred percent. Like Playboy is is such a great name, but it's a uh, great brand. But Stag yeah. Stag Party, I feel like yeah, like seventy percent, seventy percent of what it was. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, did, yes, John. They did. Stag, Stag magazine was going to sue. There was all, Stag magazine was already out. It oh, that's why you had to change the name. Well, it's one of the main reasons. They said we think that's too close. That's too close. Sorry, you know, you mm -hmm. can't use that name. So they were actually. I was just reading something. Somebody put up uh, Funny Times magazine, one of my favorite magazines. Somebody, uh, a cartoonist, did it by uh, an eight-page thing that you can look at. That's like a history of because Hefner was. Even as a as a kid, he wanted to be a cartoonist, right? And so, this, and, he, and he really supported cartoonists. And his cartoons for a while were in the early issues of Playboy until he said, "I'm not as good as these guys I'm getting." But at one point, but they're talking about that the, in the in this whole sort of cartoon history of Hefner. They, I was just looking at it a, a, a half oh. hour ago, and it said they, you know, uh, they said, "Well, they, well, we had to call it something other than Stag Party. What should we do?" And one of the staff said. Uh, we were thinking of names and said, well, there's some car that's advertised being a car for the Playboy. You know, it's like maybe that would be. Oh, OK, that sounds pretty good. Maybe we'll use Playboy. Well, that that was, I mean, you know, it, it, a, a name is very important. And and uh, hmm. the question is, would a clumsy name like Stag Party be as good as a singular name that encapsulates what you're trying to do as, as the term Playboy? Well, wasn't there a question with Bob Guccione because when he called a penthouse magazine? It was years after, but but the years after Hefner's TV show, which was Playboy's Penthouse, right, which right, was shot in the right. penthouse of you know whatever, and people at the time were like, you know, is he is he is he sort of getting something ricocheting off of? Well, uh, off er, of everything Bob Guccione Hefner. did, he tried to ricochet off of of Hefner and tried to then go one step better, you know. Um, yeah. um, <laughs> <laughs> somebody once as said one, somebody once said that you Hefner proved that if you took great literature and 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 surrounded it uh, with uh, with uh, if you took naked women and surrounded it with great literature mm -hmm. it would sell that would be you know probably. and somebody said well Guccione proved that you didn't need the literature <laughs> You know, uh, what what Guccione did is he he was the guy who first showed pubic hair, mm -hmm. and then here comes right. Hustler, and they decide to show Snatch, and here's Hefner in this never never land of having kind of a squeaky clean magazine in a way that he got major car companies to advertise and major all major major companies big major companies, and if he goes to showing snatch and showing pubic hair and all that Correct. he's going to say goodbye to all those advertisers so he was in a really bad position yes mike yeah so you're thinking of uh what's his name uh it was the midnight special and hefner worked at one time in his early career was wait, for wait, Esquire what, what, what do you mean midnight what do you mean midnight yeah. special Midnight Blue. The, well, but no, no, it was, midnight, it was the Midnight Special. No, it was they called Playboy's the, Penthouse. I have all the episodes of the first year it was ever on I here. Thought, so I thought it was Midnight Special. No, for it's, some no, no it's that's called, the Rock and Roll Show. It's called Playboy's Don Penthouse. <laughs> okay, okay. I remember I was, somewhere, no, one he, of these. He worked, for his, he worked for Esquire way before he started Penthouse. As a cartoonist. Well, no, yeah. he worked for a yep, short time. He worked, 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 worked for a short yeah. time as, at Esquire. Thing. It's great. He worked for a short time at Esquire, and then he had a falling out with them, and they either fired him or he quit or something like that. I think, I think he quit it. Yeah. Whatever. But. You know. 
uh, I mean, uh, and when he first started, what he started, it was considered outlandish and out there and so on. But by the time enough time had passed, he became quite accepted by advertisers and so on. So when you're in that position, you're in a less competitive position against people who will snipe at you and try to take it to the next level. And that was the problem that he had. I mean, if you look at the documentary that Amazon did on Hefner, which is very, very good, it stops about 1985. Because about 1985, Playboy started to lose its allure. Mm -hmm. uh, but up until that time, he did some incredible stuff. Yes, Matt? Here's a question for you. Do you think Hefner, given the current climate, could do replicate what he did in 2017? No. Be no. It, because exactly. there, it, there, I don't, I don't there, think so either. Obviously, there would have been another Hefner who had already done what Hefner had done, and what he would have to do today would be some have to be something more uh, uh, more uh, modern. You can't redo something. I mean, it's like people say to me, "Why don't you go back to San Francisco and do your radio show again?" And I go, "That was then. This is now. You know, you, if I did it now, you it'd can't." Be a big but flop. at the same time, yeah. like just playmates and 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 the shit he was in in general i don't think that would have played at all no that wouldn't play and no, you know what no no funny. but uh, like the guy like i don't know how he's not you know by the left i don't know how he's not like being criticized and like you know how how far gone it's it, it's been i don't know how they're not like thank god this like sob is dead no i don't that's think i don't but i don't think that that's the the way people perceive of him now i think if you look at this documentary you, you suddenly, literally like force people to like suck his dick and fuck him like i don't know about that, that. that no nobody force. ever accused him of force. forcing anybody to do anything no no, no he's not money. i think you're For mixing money. him up with what? his best friend bill cosby uh, <laughs> Quaaludes. Quaaludes. You know, when, when was the first Playboy cl uh, Club open? In the 1960s, wasn't it? Yeah. Something, something like that. Yeah, yeah. In the yeah. Chicago and something, yeah. wasn't it? In Manhattan? Yeah, and they oh, were Chicago. Chicago. I thought it was Chicago was the first club. Chicago was the first. If you think Hef Hefner was squeaky clean though in all this, you got to be naive. Well, though. no, I think I think Hefner was. Let me put it this way. I think Hefner was squeaky clean to this extent that I don't think that he was a pervert. I don't think that he was out there and... Uh, and, and Do you think uh, he was like kind of like name your price and no, I'll no. give it to you for, no. for sucking my dick or no. whatever? No, no. no. Nah. I don't... Look, I, don't, no. think, I, don't, I think you have to separate the man as the publisher from his personal sex life, which may have been... But he oh, literally oh, like paid oh, women wait, to have wait, sex wait, with him. No, but, no, but it that may have been thing. all overstated. OK, uh, I don't, because I don't know. because he, I don't know. he set himself but every girlfriend of his is playmate of the year. The name of the the name of the yeah. magazine. was. Wait a minute. Hold, on a, Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Everybody chunk, quiet. Chunk a second. Of money. Quiet. A hey, second. Go, go ahead. Alex. Uh, the name of the magazine was Playboy. And what he did was set himself up as the Playboy. He was, the you best. know, and so that was the image. Now, he I think you have to se and, and ready to make <clears> you have to girl. separate that image. OK. From from what he really was, and from what I understand, he was very decent to women. He wasn't, uh, oh, you know, he wasn't a, a shithead. Uh, and uh, I agree that he was decent, yeah. but uh, yeah. but uh, it was kind of like a. I feel like it was kind of like a name your price sort of like. No, uh, there was people no. that wanted. There was to an fuck assumption him, but, in the early they wanted, days. They wanted his yeah. money. Part of the, the problem thing. he had was in the early days. There was an assumption <laughs> that what Playboy was promoting, and in a way, he were right. That it that you know to be the perfect playboy you have to wear the right clothes you have to drink the right wines you have to eat the finest dinners right, and by the way you also have to have this piece of jewelry called a woman on your arm you know she was the woman was being sold like he was selling cufflinks you know uh, but I got to tell you a woman somebody came along and took his model and started a magazine based on it. And it was called Ms. And if you think about Ms., she, right. she used all the all the touchstones of what Hefner did. In other words, you possess this magazine, and you are now possessing. Well, you, you, let me finish, will you? Let me finish. You 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 you're, you 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 hold this magazine in your hand, and and you become that magazine. You by osmosis are a liberated woman. You by osmosis are a playboy. And I and I think that's what the fashion 
part of the magazine was all about. And he would sell Playboy cufflinks. But I got to tell you, Ms. Magazine was selling like, you know, earrings with the Ms. logo on them. So, you know. So, the so what do you thing. think his appeal was to, to women? Like, he had no appeal think, to I can't imagine him appealing to any woman. If he was, he, if he he didn't was have an a lot average of money. Joe. I, yeah. I saw him back yeah. in the day. He was like power. a normal looking dude. He was a guy. Do you think it's trophy, power? Do you think it's power? Do you think he's just the got a, got a huge dick or, or what? It was power. Yeah, yeah, power. Power. Yeah. power. It was power. Yeah, say, say, I uh, Rob, Rob, too. wait a minute. There are a lot of people. Where does he start out? Hold on a second. Hold on a second. How does he There are a lot of people here right now, and it's hard for me to keep this thing going so let's try and it, it, let's let's raise hands yes let's, let's raise okay. hands jeff the one thing i remember about hefner and in chicago the tv show that used to be on at night mm -hmm. and and it was fantastic and and he had all kinds of people who were there who were professors people who were uh, uh, political people Musician. Well, well, better than that, uh, I have I, I have those shows here. Uh, they put out a, 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 a three or four disc set of of the first run of Playboy's Penthouse, and I think the second year he did it as well. He did two years in Chicago, and he had people on every week like Sammy Davis Jr. and Lenny yeah. Bruce he and Ella Reverend, Fitzgerald Reverend and Reverend Jackson. Fantastic. Oh yeah, Jesse Jackson has a that a big uh, yeah. uh, now, uh, eulogy. He did a show later on <laughs> called uh, called uh, Playboy, yeah, Playboy After, After Dark. Dark. After Dark. Oh, I was gonna say oh, what's After Dark. Right. Yeah, I saw some of those. Playboy After Dark, but th that was not as good as the original old black and white. Playboy's Penthouse, which yeah. just had some of the greatest l luminaries uh, in show business on it. It was an incredible show. Just an incredible to, to show. Me, that was you couldn't do that today. Show. No, you couldn't. No. You couldn't. You don't have that kind of talent out there. Well, no, yeah. what you have to have yeah. is, is uh, people are always promoting something today. And if yes. you have them on and you aren't promoting something, and they aren't promoting something, why are they there? You know? Right. So... That, that, but uh, but what I wanted to say about Hefner was that if you look at this, uh, and I, I suggest you look at this Amazon show because it's really very it's ve really very good because it shows the things that he did uh, that advanced us in a lot of ways. I mean, he opened up the sexual dialogue in this country. What what who's what, what, what is that? Who's making noise? So he's got the website up and it's audio yeah. backfeed. Yeah. Anyway, um, he, he, he opened up dialogue. He made life easier for gays. Uh, you know, uh, yes, there was a certain chauvinism in, in, in Playboy and in Hefner's presentation. But, uh, oh, I noticed we just got, oh, boy. Here we got, a problem. We got a problem. I now have to open up the screen here. And uh, hopefully uh, we can. Uh, Not lose anyone. Well, no. What I'm I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get Renee in there. Uh, I didn't. I can know, see her. I didn't even know. No, I know you can see her, but the audience can't. So I have to now open up the screen, just bigger. Hey. Because she. Excuse called. me a second. I got to take a meeting. I'm sorry. I'll call you back. No, no. Wait. Oh, thanks. Don't even call back, Renee. I just adjusted the whole screen to accommodate you. Jeez almighty. Uh, 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 I, I was, I could see her. I don't know what happened. Well, I know it, it isn't a matter if you can see her. It's whether the audience can see her or not. Oh, on Facebook. Yes, okay. on Facebook. So, you know, that, that, that was a problem. So don't call back, uh, Renee, because I can't, I can't accommodate you. Uh, any law, you know, it, it would be wrong of me to, to do it. Uh, it would just make this everybody too crowded in here. I'm trying to rearrange the screen now. Uh, okay, here we go. Uh, come on, you fucker. Uh, <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me redo this, okay? Yeah, no, Renee. You, you uh, talk to your computer? <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, you know, don't call back, Renee, because we can't take another person. It's we got what? Well, we got we have we have eleven. Eleven with me, 
And so yeah, when we when one, one more person back. comes on, they're off to the side and she couldn't be seen. So then I have to open up the screen and then I have to make adjustments over here. And before you know it, I'm up to my ass in uh, in problems. So uh, uh, we just can't take any more callers. All right. Leave it at that. And hope I see here that the guy who bought the mansion is 33 years old. Yeah, he he is worth two point four billion. He owns uh, hosts Ace. and blue ribbon, Paps Blue Ribbon. Yeah, I, I, Paps I, Blue I, I, Ribbon. I, I don't know. Why, I don't know why they said. What, what is that noise? Who's making noise? I'll, I'll mute myself. I don't think. Well, it's I don't me. think it's you. No, it's hey. not you. It's not you. Uh, 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 they they said he he had he, he owned Twinkies. That was his claim to fame. Was Twinkies. He owns well, Hostess. But he yeah. owns Hostess. That's bigger than owning Twinkies, you know. Yeah. And then well, he he's the new buyer. Million. He's the guy who brought the Twinkie back because it had closed down. Oh, you're right. It did, didn't it? Yeah. Yes. Right, and they brought uh, it back, right? Yeah. Twinkies and beer. Ooh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, that <laughs> sounds like a Saturday night. <laughs> So like a, a good morning uh, breakfast. Yeah, listen, Beer and Twinkie. Rob's uh, the toilets could talk. I'm sure it would. Uh... Boy, we're losing a lot of people on our video. I have no idea why. Somebody, quick, take your shirt off or something. I don't. Know. <laughs> anyway, um, I. Uh, um, what was I going to say? Um, <laughs> Uh, oh, uh, Rob Schneider brought something up that I thought was very interesting in the interview tonight. <clears throat> and that was that he doesn't like to make fun of Donald Trump. And the reason he doesn't like to make fun of Donald Trump, as he put it, was it's too easy. You know, it's more, it's more difficult and you get more of a reaction by making fun of the people who are making fun of Trump. That's what Jordan Klepper is doing on his new show. Really? On Comedy Central, he's making fun of like Alex Jones and 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 those crazy people who are just making fun of people making fun of him. Yeah, but you know, you should also make fun of uh, even the thing that, that it, you know, like I mean, he said he doesn't like Hillary, and neither do I, really. And so he would rather make so fun I. of Hillary than make fun of Trump because Trump is like shooting fish in a barrel. It's too easy. Yeah. yeah. No shortage yeah, but when you, when of material you, there. What? I said no shortage of material there. Right. Oh, here comes Renee again. Renee, I can't, I can't add you. I really can't. I'm sorry. Good. One less liberal. I can't. Uh, no. <laughs> I can't. I can't add. Now, when you mentioned Joe, Renee, nah, I love you. I, I, I like Renee. I love I like you Renee. dearly, but I can't add you. Are you still there, Charlene? Oh yeah. Oh, okay. You don't have a picture because I. That's why I didn't know whether really? you were on or not. Yeah. Uh, I'm asleep yet. I'm on my phone. Yeah. Because my laptop. I can log off if you need to. I mean, I, well, you know, I'm, yeah, well, I'm, doing, you know, I'm doing some work here. I can. You know. No, Renee is not probably not going to call back now. And I'm sorry, Renee. I mean, we'd love to have you on, but uh, it's just that when we get to this point, I have to open up the screen and I have to make adjustments, and oh. it's really hellish. Okay. <laughs> and and it's it's not your lovely countenance. We'd love to have another woman here tonight, but. You know. Yeah, we need we need some diversity. Too many white well, here, guys. Here she goes again. Um, old white guys. Uh, <laughs> Too many old white guys. Uh, I I can't I can't take you. Let me let me answer it. Uh, you'll see Not her. On, ages. You'll see her on the edge of the screen if you see her at all. Uh, there. Uh, I, I got uh, it. Uh, yeah, I. Yeah, I see her. Yeah, I know you see her, but the audience doesn't. Okay. Uh, Alex, the, the audience has ears. Well, you know, I mean, I, quite frankly, I, 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 it's, uh, oh, well, what the hell? I mean, I can't do anything. I mean, Renee, Renee, we don't have room for you is what I'm saying. (laughs) No, it's okay. I will listen then, but I. Hey, there she is. Yeah. Did you have, did you have something you wanted to say? Because otherwise I have to open up the screen and I have to do some stuff here and I. Yeah, she's good. She's good. She can stay in the background. Yeah. Whatever she has to say. Yeah. Yeah. She's good. Yeah. I'll just sit here and behave. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's a horrible problem to have, but it's a nice problem to have at the same time. That's uh, a first world problem too. Huh? Hey, ever ever since ever since you came to Facebook, you've been uh, blowing up. Blo- what do you mean blowing up? 
blowing. You've been getting full houses almost every right. night. Yeah. yeah, a lot of different callers. Yeah, a lot He's of different been on callers. Facebook for a while, hasn't he? Yeah, it's been a it's been a few months, but uh, that's you know you were before Facebook you were scraping for uh, four callers. Yeah, you know we'd get we get open houses every once in a while, but uh, once Facebook came around, it's been almost every night. Now, so. now somebody hung been, uh, somebody hung up. Oh, we got uh, uh, Jeff went away. Hold on a second. Uh, I see. But, but he's now. coming. He's coming back on. He just he he lost signal, or something. Uh, but there we have, Ren- we have Renee on the bottom, so maybe Ooh, when it's... Jeff comes in, he'll be on the top somewhere. I don't know. Anyway. It's, still, it's still daylight in Hawaii. I'm it jealous. is. It's going to be a sunset pretty soon. Oh, I'm so jealous. Jesus Christ. <laughs> I'm hot and sticky, though. It's our, It's still like 80-something yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> hey, hey, what happened to uh, James? Has he called in, in a while? I've, I usually listen to uh, every show, but I don't think I've heard him for James for a couple of weeks. The, the guy uh, in Hawaii. James from oh, Hawaii. Oh, uh, James in Hawaii. Uh, no, yeah. that isn't James. That's uh, what, it's what's James. Uh, is that his name, James? James. Oh, yeah. I always think of him by his last name. What's his last name? I can't think of it. Right I, now. It's, no, you yeah. know I don't yeah, remember. But he know. calls. Normally, he calls in on Fridays. Yeah, yeah. And He's always, a big and always kind of refers person. to me as Mister Bennett. Right. Yeah. And Mr. <laughs> Mr. Everything. Mr. Yeah. Phil. Miss Renee. You know. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> he called or Auntie. Tiny Tim. So, but anyway, I had to hang up because I sat on my chair and broke it. So, as you were talking, trying to get me in, my ass was like halfway down the into the cavern. Oh, I see. So, <laughs> you know, <I'm> <laughs> anyway, uh, anyway, anyway stuff, right? break. pretty much. Hey, watch. You don't get to talk about my bidet. It's driving me nuts when I hear you talk about that. <laughs> so, what? well, uh, if you have nuts, hey, you don't I use. It. If you have nu- if you're nuts, if you have nuts, you don't use a bidet, right? Uh, oh, you wash your asshole out. Yeah. Oh, okay. One night I'm sitting on the toilet and I'm like, oh well, this could be fun, and then all of a sudden I hear his voice coming from above, going, "Pussy freezing toilet." <laughs> I'm like, my humor oh, is like oh, peanut oh, butter. It sticks to your ribs and you doesn't, start doesn't... cackling uncontrollably in inappropriate situations. It's yeah, the only I, kind of clean know. humor we can think of. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, isn't uh, is isn't Amy bothered by the talk about your bidet? Although she's bothered by a lot of stuff like Brian because she might cost him an election or something. I could care less. Yeah, me too. Hey, let's, hey, let's, good to see you, buddy. Let's throw her election. You need to act like a human being, and this is campaigning 2.0 and the uh, millennial and, you know, Generation X and Z generations. I I want to ask Matt something, because, Matt, you voted for Trump, right? I did. Yeah. I did. I, I, uh, you know, I was, now I'm a registered Republican. I was a registered Democrat. I voted for Bernie Sanders in the primary. Yeah. Oh, so you're Uh, one of those disaffected Bernie people who went over to Trump. You should talk to Amy yeah. then and give her proof that you're the reason why the Democrats need to get their heads out of their ass and, uh, you know, stop being well, I was, a I was corporation. A, I was a hardcore Democrat, and uh, I don't know. They, for some Are reason, happy they, with they, Trump they, now? they, really they lost me along the way. No, wait, 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 wait a minute. Hold on a second. Why did they lose you? Tell, tell us, young man. Why did they lose you? They lost me primarily because their just message just sucked. Yeah. It was, you know, they 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 play the. Uh, I I don't want to feel guilty about being a white male. Like fuck, like that's who I am. Like I can't help it. I sympathize with black people, with uh, you know, with Hispanics, with um, you know, people of an, any other nationality. Like like I don't I don't have prejudice against anybody else. But like it's like once you start telling me I'm a white male, so I should just kill myself like mm. that's where i fucking like draw the line i'm like dude what the fuck do you want me to do you know yeah and that's it's it's just bullshit it's like i i want the best for anyone and i want i want meritocracy if you can do if you can do your job better than me i fucking want you to to have that job like that's that's my thing right and um you and and once important. you start okay. telling me like i have white privilege and all this shit like I know that I'm I'm going to be not profiled by the cops as much as a black person or a Muslim or whatever. I can sympathize with that. I'm I'm. Hey, hey like, Matt, can you hey Matt, can you give us any specifics? 
Uh, what do you mean? Specific things that, that you heard that you think were slanted that way? Um, I I can't think of any specifics uh, uh, on the top of my head, but I mean, I can I can tell you that uh, what's been shared by the uh, like MSNBC or something, like they'll share something about a black person being shot by the police that was like totally unjust, and I will go and do my research and see that that person that you know that african american had a gun and was like pointing it at the cops and got shot and i'm just like okay well like i do not see any reason for this you know uh, like my whole thing is like but i believe in, in reality re re in, including cnn they do retract stories if they do get it wrong most of the time well, Very, Fox, but yeah but i i think i think what matt is saying and i don't know that i agree with you matt but is that that he, he was tired of being made feeling guilty because he was white? Yeah, you know, and, and, and that's that's a lot and, of people though. It's a you know, you, you like the Democratic Democrats, Party is anti-white. Really, man? it's 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 it really is. Democrats are anti anti-white. It's 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 the you know I don't know what else to tell you. <laughs> well, let Joe Biden know that. Uh, it, 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 it sounds to me like some of the fake news that's been passed out on social it's, media. It's I think really, you have. I think there's really some truth to what you're saying, news. but I think it's, it's really not because I've, I've talked to I've talked to people that are on the left that are white, and they are like you know I've talked to gay people and transgenders and stuff like that. And they have told me that I don't understand because I'm a white cis male. You know, I've been hearing pro diversity like, doesn't mean anti white. But you know, I've been hearing it, the it same thing. It doesn't. That's exactly. Right. 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 Let, let, that's right. what they have. Yeah. They have branded themselves let, as. Let Rob. They have branded themselves as you're let white. You don't let, understand. Let, fuck you. You know, you're a piece of shit. Rob you wants know, to that's, say that's what I've been branded as. Rob. And I can. I hear what you're saying, and I agree with you because I I watch Bill Maher's program every week, and. I've been I feeling I've been feeling more and more that same sentiment like, you know, shit, I was just born. I can't help that I'm white, but I get the same. There's almost like a a disdain for a white male. Exactly. Well, and I, agree. Okay. I, okay. I agree. I agree. Really wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold minorities. on a second. I really do. I feel for minorities. I have a. Yeah. I, you know, I've worked with a ton of uh, of African-Americans, of people of of, of different uh you know, di diverse yeah. backgrounds, and you know, I really feel for that. And I and I right. talk well, to them hold, about hold, it and hold. everything. And you know what? It's just, and they don't project that on me at all. They don't go, "You're a fuck. You're a white male. Okay. Fuck you." you hold, hold, on hold on a second. Hold on a second. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on. Wait. Wait a minute. Tim. 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 Hold on. Renee has had her hand up for about two minutes yeah, here. Go ahead, Renee. Okay, Matt. It's good to see you again. Yeah. Thank and, you. And um, you so it's nice to have you back. And then Michael Klein, we hear from you, but we don't usually see you. So the everything that you just said, a woman has said. A female has got to go through a whole bunch of bullshit, just like you feel you're going through. But we don't get to we don't get to do the same thing that Trump and his followers are doing. We don't get to do fear. We don't get to have you know red meat thrown at us that we can go okay, and, uh, and tear up a whole but, town. But Renee, we don't do it Renee, those things. Renee, but we just as Renee, I mean, when know. are we going to stop saying my priority is more important than your priority? Well, not during this, not during the Trump administration, no, because the no, Democrats but all of a were sudden, all of a sudden, you're saying, but, but you, you, you think, I don't, you I don't th think so. I worked for a company yeah, that, that prioritized women over males. And there is a women, there is a woman that, that was, that got chosen over me to be uh, the leader of my department. Uh, there's a woman who is the CEO um, he, 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 All right. Let me mention. I, under, I understand think, the question. Minute, let me, so you let, just think that it's you. You just think that it's the I, white male that's being oppressed and the rest of his. I don't, I don't think white anybody. males are being oppressed. I don't think that at all. But yeah. I think there are certain okay. benefits that are are being given to minorities. Uh, let me and, let me let me bring something up here and let me it, just say I, this and then then we can throw it out there. Uh. For years, men have had this horrible thing of having to be the breadwinners. Uh, it has been a terrible burden which they have had on their backs, and uh, they they were meant to bring home the bacon. All of a sudden, we go into this 
area of uh, sexual equality and the women join the workforce and they're not competing with the guys for the jobs. And yet these guys still have a family at home and their wife, his wife is now working and he's working and they're both taking up a job that some other white guy or black guy who needs to feed his family can't get because they're hogging the, the job market. No, see, now you're just seeing that's where you come to be blaming the women. You've got uh, no, the I'm, no, I'm not blaming the and, women. And what I'm just, saying is one no, of them should stay home. One of them should. No, one of them should. You're st- saying that men you're not, don't you're, need you're, women with no, all you're their making, fucking kids. You're making, and they you're just making them wrong assumptions, Renee. Renee. What, what Renee, I Renee you are so blind. You are so blind when it comes to this topic. I can't believe it. What I'm saying is that. If two people in the household want to go to work, only one of them should go to work. The other one should stay home. Okay? Then now, wait a minute. Let me finish what I'm saying. One of them should help. stay home because what you're doing is you're sure. depriving the work, work market of having the household wage earner from being able to find a job. That's all I'm saying. And I'm saying that when you have these double income families, what you're doing is you're hogging the job market. But and I agree with that. And the issue is, is that if you have young children, we should be supplementing you to stay home to make sure I that agree those with you. have what? something there. In the what? Have, wait a minute. Wait. Wait and somebody there at night when those oh, kids get off. Somebody. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, Rob. Rob. Yeah. Rob. Wait it's a minute. Let, let Rob talk. Wait a minute. You want to do what? You want to supplement people for having kids so they could stay home? I'm turning Republican. Just, Are you crazy? <laughs> Are you, crazy? you know something, no. Rob? You're bringing up something. You're you, 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 welcome to the team. Of, how do I get a word in edgewise here? Rob, you brought up something I was thinking of uh, just the other day. And that is when I heard the president say, and for every child you have, you get a tax deduction or whatever. And I went, yeah, maybe they should get a tax deduction for the first two kids, but every one after that, they get penalized. Right, exactly. China. <laughs> Fuck them. Yeah. Fuck these. Fuck you you, you get penalized. Fuck. Crap, I don't have any kids. You want, want, you want to be kids. the Duggars? I'm sorry. Yeah, neither you, do I, Rob. You, you, the Dug- don't have any, Rob. I have one, and I want to give them away. Crap. <laughs> Look, wow. if, if you live in a state that forces women to have children... When they get raped or when they're alone or when they don't have a breadwinner in the family, then guess what? You're agreeing to get that child ready and healthy for preschool. You're agreeing to put that child through school and you're agreeing to make sure that there's somebody there when they get home from school to actually do homework. How and about why- the parents take responsibility for the seeds that they put into this life? Yeah. Thank you. Well, exactly. Fine with hey, me. Hey, man. I, I don't, don't think do I, I don't think that Catalina the- Tina's and the uh, Jimmy Junior John Schlongs need yeah. to be lassoed in. Yeah. Come to Baltimore. See, it's already been proven that if, if a society puts the effort into the amount of children and the that they've got into the society, it's a better society. But one, we're not willing to do that. We are not willing to say the little black kid needs to have the same education as the little white kid. All we're saying is the little white kid gets top of the rung and all of the rest Baltimore of them get the is. bottom of the rung. But that's not how it should be. Baltimore it shouldn't be that way at all. Four times the amount of uh, all the counties in Maryland on on hey, education hey, Matt. in Baltimore. Hey Matt. Yeah. This is this is Tim. Yeah. I I kind of I kind of agree with both of you, but more more so with Renee. But I think we're, we're misusing the term white man because there there's two white men. There's the white men like you and I, but there's also the white men that have been in power, and have mm-hmm. lied to people. Sort of like some of the, like they're lying about the tax reform, like they lied about Obamacare. So I think what the Democratic Party is upset with is not white men in general. I think the fact that white men, and if you look at all the appointments by Trump, they're almost all white men. They're white men are fine, agree. but it's agree. the ones that are the bad seeds. Yeah, but you see, Tim, you're, ask, upset you're, with. You're, you're, you're making a bunch of platitudes here, but you're not asking the most important question of Matt. And that is, you know... What can I do to get you into this car? In other words, what is it the Democratic Party could do to get you back with them again? Well, what I, is I it? Let me finish, Tim. Tim, I'm, I'm asking Matt. 
What 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 do what do they need to say to you that would seduce you to come back? I I think the Democratic Party had an absolute great brand in in 2008 up until 2014 probably. I voted for Obama in 2012. I voted the whole Democratic ticket in 2012. I was uh, born in 90, so when could I vote? Uh, 2010, I voted for the Democratic Party in 2010. I yeah. voted for Obama in 2012. You know, I was very happy with it. And in 2016, I mean, they just lost me. It was, it was your, you know, you don't understand anything if you're a white male, you know, fuck you because you're white. It was, it was I didn't like, hear it was that, like, I didn't hear it that much. Well, that's, 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 that's it that's doesn't matter whether you what, no it doesn't matter Tim heard. it that's, doesn't it doesn't matter whether you heard it or not the thing matters wait, is wait, Matt wait a minute hold on I, Matt didn't hear it Matt didn't person. hear it I I am the average person I was I was completely with the Democrats I was open to hearing what everybody had to say and you know what the, the Democratic Party you know I I I enjoyed Obama I thought he was a great guy. Um, I, I didn't, you know, he did as much as he could to advance the country and all that, uh, stuff. And, and, you know, whether he succeeded or not, I don't know, time will tell. But, um, what I heard from the democratic party was, was fuck you. You're a white male. You know, you don't understand. It went, it went so fucking far just to, you know, like the, I don't, I don't, I don't even know how to explain it. Like, just yeah. I'm I can't a white think of male. Any specific policies or, well, yeah. wait, 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 okay, okay. Or policies. I, perception. I Brian. Perception has, is the is the key. Yeah. yeah. Brian perception has his hand key. up. Brian. Yes. Uh, echo that notion that Rob just uh, stated. Perception is the key. That there's a slight difference in perception from one person to another. I voted for Hillary Clinton, but I did so holding my nose Me too. on account of the fact that I wanted uh, <laughs> I wanted Bernie. And what I heard, and a little different from what I hear about the uh, follies of the Democratic Party versus whereas Matt believes that the, their basic message was, fuck you, you're a white man, um, you're over, you, you have too much, you should involuntarily give, or voluntarily give a lot. No, I, I what I say what I saw in this Democratic establishment, what I saw in Hillary's campaign was, as Jimmy Dore stated on YouTube, um, vote for us because vote for me because I'm not Donald Trump, and that's why you should also vote for me because I'm not Donald Trump. A and B, less important, but also you know she wasn't quite as vocal about it. But it's my turn. Fuck you. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It, the, the, she she did kind of give us that impression. It was my it, turn. It's your turn. It's time. Work. It's time it's for a fuck. woman to be president. And you know what? I I would love. I would absolutely love a woman to be president. So would uh, I. Yeah, uh, but, but, but I don't. But I don't think she's the right person. I don't. Think she's right person. So so well, are we going to wait another twenty years for another woman so that you'd feel comfortable I, voting I, for a woman? I I hope the next election has a woman who is more qualified. <laughs> Now, I don't more, want to say more qualified that, because you can. That's going to be throw. difficult. We didn't there. look. Look, look, Renee. Wait, wait, Renee. Where you're missing the boat is the fact of the matter is that we didn't feel uncomfortable with uh, Hillary because she was a woman. We felt uncomfortable with Hillary because we felt uncomfortable with Hillary. Because you know. she was a Clinton. Yeah. yeah. My, Why do you want? My, at, the, at the basis of my beliefs is meritocracy. If you can fucking win me over, I will vote for you. I don't care about your fucking party. So if you I, say I don't want to vote. Hey, vote. he's a white guy who voted for a black guy believe. twice. You know, I voted for a black guy. I don't fucking care. I love. No. I thought Obama was a fucking great guy. He was a family man. He he absolutely believed in what he, he said. Didn't. I believe that. I believe. He wanted the best for the country. He wanted the best for Americans. I absolutely believe and that. And by the way, should I, and, may, no, I, I, may I add that he also maintained a dignity in that office? He had yes. a big dick. He probably fucked more women than Hugh Hefner. You know? Well, I don't think so. I think that his wife <laughs> no, would probably so, beat the uh, crap out of him. With those shoulders? Oh, yeah. She could, yeah. She could, uh, uh, yes, can Renee I, has her hand can up. Can I ask Matt a question? Yeah, go ahead. Yes. Um, what, what were the merits that Trump presented that kind of caught your eye what what did you see were his merits for getting the job 
I thank you. Was this past his business history or? I just curious. It was, it was I'm in, so I'm in business, so that kind of like appealed me a little. Um, but I I think he was for the you know you can you can throw out that he was yeah. you know that he cheated people or or whatever you know that that his business history or whatever. But I I honest the way he presented himself is that he was for the common man that he will do anything in his power. Um, uh, to to work for the common person in America, the you know we need to bring. I work well, for a in, in that company. case. In that case, I'd say I say you were very you were very naive. By the way, we lost Renee. Oh, yeah. Now I don't know Thanks. why we lost. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Great. Hold on the, a second. The, the, uh, Please. The listen. economy grew at three point one percent last uh, listen, listen, uh, last for, quarter. Uh, uh, that doesn't mean shit. Uh, <laughs> that's still based on what we did last year. Yeah, but and now let me can I jump in here? This is my show. Uh, yes, go ahead. Yeah, I'd like to, uh, because Renee had her hand up, and I was trying to go to her, and everybody was talking on top of everybody else, and I couldn't get there, and I think she finally hung up in frustration. So I apologize, Renee. I was trying to get to you, but nobody. Yeah, I, was, I always like hearing from Renee. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, if you want to call back Renee for the last few minutes, I, I wish you would, uh, but uh, uh, all I'm trying to say about about. Uh, 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 Hillary. Hillary lost the election because Hillary lost the election. Let's just be very honest about that. She did a shitty job of running. She, she was a smug bitch. Disingenuous. She was naive. Well, she was now, naive. don't use the she word bitch. Otherwise, Renee's going to be right. Okay? So don't use the word bitch. Uh, Can you see me? Can you see me, Alex? You, I can't see you. She was, you. A, no, she was a smug oh. cunt. Because yeah, yeah, I had my hand up, uh, and I thought maybe you could. Currently, Wentley, no, we, we, you, we have no picture on you. Go ahead, Rene. Uh, I didn't Charlie. interrupt, but you know, if I say, sorry, because you lose your train of thought. But you know, who do who do you men think is a better woman to run that you think would be somebody that you would want to vote? Like Elizabeth Warren. We're right off the bat. Elizabeth, no. Warren. Elizabeth, Elizabeth Warren. Warren well, Elizabeth bitch. Warren is the first no. name that comes to to mind. Why do you say she's There's a also bitch? Kirsten, because I Kirsten, don't like Kirsten Gillibrand from New York State. I think she's terrific. You know, how do you think that men are, men and women, human beings are inherently? You think human beings are inherently good and will do things out of the goodness of their heart if left to their own devices without government oversight to make sure that they do what is fair for everyone? Honestly, yes. Wow, oh, you are so yeah. naive. You're too young. I'm, I'm not naive. Well, no, wait, wait. Don't, don't, write, don't write him off as young because Matt is right do? there in a, in a core voting I am not group. naive because you know what? Left to their own devices, the free market will dictate what happens. If you, di if you know that somebody is being uh, a shyster or something, you will not buy from them. Yeah, but, but uh, how do you know they're a shyster then, unless some government agency says, hey, this guy's a shyster? Because Thank there's been the there's been Those fucking like regulations like up gas that have proven that you know it's it's not the case. Well, it's look, 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 you, know, you, know, you can't have a football game without the umpires and referees. Uh, let me ask you a question. Let me have, ask you a question, uh, uh, man. Right, how many how many cable right. how many cable companies do you have in your area? Thank you. Um, I have Directv, Verizon, and Comcast. I believe. Okay, and if you want to buy insurance, how many? Oh, wait a minute. How many companies are there you can buy insurance from? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I have no idea. All the numbers I'm you're going to answer me are something like four, because uh, it, what's Probably happened? Right. What's happened is the the corporations have all merged with each other, and now it's just as one galopoly. Uh, right. Absolutely. Because yeah. there's no regulation. Because there's no regulation. And you're going to get screwed because of that, Matt. I'm going to be dead. You're going to get screwed. You know? Big companies. I'm glad I'm, I'm glad I'm older. Wait a minute. Wait. <laughs> so wait. Years, so wait. You're advocating for a free. You're advocating for a free market. That's what you're doing. I'm no, we're not. We're no free market for when there's a, a reasonably regulated market. So you have to have police and you have to have umpires. To make sure the game is played fair, I, it should not be overregulated. No. So how do so you feel? Here, here, let me give you a quick. Let me give you a quick little one, and then we got to go here. But Tobacco today, company, today the go. head of the FCC, today hours. the head of the FCC <laughs> asked all the smartphone operators to uh, activate their FM chip in the phones. All the phones have yeah. an FM capable chip to let you listen to FM radio. He wants them all to all to turn on their FM chip, and Apple said, "Fuck you," basically. 
Uh, how do you feel about that? Do you feel the government should enter into something like that? With the FM chip? Yeah. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what, explain that again. They, there's an FM chip in your cell phone right now, your smartphone, that would allow you to listen to FM radio stations. Okay. And the FCC says that it's important in case of disasters like what you have going on in, you know, in, in Puerto Rico right now, if you don't have cell communications, people can take their phones and like they can radio, receive like radio. radio. They can receive FM radio signals. Yeah. And, the, and the companies don't want to do it. Apple, Apple said no. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, well, I agree with if if it's, I think no, but, no, but if my it's, question it's, here is and it's just a quick one, Matt, and then we got to go. Is do you consider that the government meddling in uh, in business affairs? If it, if it's national security, no. Well, it's not national security. This guy's just using it's more safety argument. issue. Uh, That's issue. true. It's more. It's more trying to save. Too. Is trying to save a dying uh, business. Anyway, listen, we got to go. Boy, oh, music started. On the I'll tell you, when we get this many people, sometimes it's really ah, hard fuck. work for me, and I don't like hard work. Michael, mm. please call us again soon, will you? We love having sure. you here. Uh, it, it, it's been too long. Rob, always a pleasure. Matt, you better call again soon. This is. I'll we, try. We love having you here. We just love right. having you here. Charlene, same thing with you. Tim, thank you. Uh, John Rockwell, thank you. Renee, thank you. Matt, thank you. Uh, Mike, thank you, rather. Uh, Kevin, thank you. And uh, uh, Citizen Brian, thank you so very much. That's our uh, citizen panel for tonight. And if they're really good and they're really nice, I'll let them wave goodbye to you. Oh, also Jeff Stein. Thank you, Jeff, as well. Wave goodbye, everybody. Okay. Waving, but I can say. Yeah, anyway. That's it uh, for tonight, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Alex Bennett, and uh, that's all she... Oh, I have, I have a frozen picture. How do you like that? The picture froze up on me. Oh, well, uh, you'll just have to hear my voice and hear me say, uh, stay tuned for the, uh, uh, the program that's next, which is, of course, Jack and Amy in the intersection. I'll see you again tomorrow night, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her... Tell her I love her, okay?